The past does not equal the future. Tony Robbins You cannot change the past, but you can shape your future by learning from it. To find out a girl's faults, praise her to her girlfriends. Don't count the days. Make the days count. Muhammad Ali Embrace solitude as a time for reflection and self-discovery. Always make a total effort even when the odds are against you. Awakening is not changing who you are, but discarding who you are not. Deepak Chopra Against those who eagerly seek preferment at Rome. If we applied ourselves as busily to our own work as the old men at Rome do to those matters about which they are employed, perhaps we also might accomplish something. I am acquainted with a man older than myself who is now superintendent of corn at Rome, and remember the time when he came here on his way back from exile, and what he said as he related the events of his former life, and how he declared that with respect to the future after his return, he would look after nothing else than passing the rest of his life in quiet and tranquility. For how little of life, he said, remains for me. I replied, you will not do it. But as soon as you smell Rome, you will forget all that you have said. And if admission is allowed even into the imperial palace, you will gladly thrust yourself in and thank God. If you find me, Epictetus, he answered, setting even one foot within the palace, think what you please. Well, what then did he do? Before he entered the city he was met by letters from Caesar, and as soon as he received them he forgot all, and ever after has added one piece of business to another. I wish that I were now by his side to remind him of what he said when he was passing this way, and to tell him how much better a seer I am than he is. Well then, do I say that man is an animal made for doing nothing? Certainly not. But why are we not active? For example, as to myself, as soon as day comes, in a few words I remind myself of what I must read over to my pupils. Then forthwith I say to myself, but what is it to me how a certain person shall read? The first thing for me is to sleep. And indeed, what resemblance is there between what other persons do and what we do? If you observe what they do, you will understand. And what else do they do all day long than make up accounts, inquire among themselves, give and take advice about some small quantity of grain, a bit of land, and such kind of profits? Is it then the same thing to receive a petition and to read in it? I entreat you to permit me to export a small quantity of corn, and one to this effect. I entreat you to learn from Chrysippus what is the administration of the world and what place in it the rational animal holds. Consider also who you are and what is the nature of your good and bad. Are these things like the other? Do they require equal care? And is it equally base to neglect these and those? Well then, are we the only persons who are lazy and love sleep? No, but much rather you young men are. For we old men, when we see young men amusing themselves, are eager to play with them. And if I saw you active and zealous, much more should I be eager myself to join you in your serious pursuits. At first you choose a partner based on appearance and enjoy it until you realize that your children will be raised not based on appearance but based on values. If you want to be happy, set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hopes.
Man is the measure of all things Protagoras. Life is a play, it's not the length, but the excellence of the acting that matters. Spend your first 20 years worrying what people think about you. You spend your next 20 years swearing that you don't care what people think about you. You spend the next 20 years realizing that they aren't thinking about you. You are always creating, and the world is the reflection of your creations. Neville Goddard Remember that thy mind is of that nature as that it becometh altogether unconquerable. When once recollected in herself, she seeks no other content than this, that she cannot be forced, yea, though it so fall out, that it be even against reason itself, that it cloth bandy. How much less when by the help of reason she is able to judge of things with discretion, and therefore let thy chief fort and place of defense be a mind free from passions, a stronger place, whereunto to make his refuge and so to become impregnable, and better fortified than this hath no man. He that seeth not this is unlearned. He that seeth it and betaketh not himself to this place of refuge is unhappy. Life is too short. Don't listen to the malicious comments of those friends who never taking any risks themselves, can only see other people's failures. The best revenge is massive success. Frank Sinatra A man can be himself only so long as he is alone, and if he does not love solitude, he will not love freedom for it is only when he is alone that he is really free. It is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. The reason most people fail is that they give up what they want most for what they want now. Alex Hormozzi It is but an ordinary coarse one, yet it is a good effectual remedy against the fear of death for a man to consider in his mind the examples of such who greedily and covetously, as it were, did for a long time enjoy their lives. What have they got more than they whose deaths have been untimely? Are not they themselves dead at the last, as Cadiciants, Fabius, Julianus, Lepidus, or any other who in their lifetime having buried many, or at the last buried themselves. The whole space of any man's life is but little, and as little as it is, with what troubles, with what manner of dispositions, and in the society of how wretched a body must it be passed. Let it be therefore unto thee altogether as a matter of indifferency. For if thou shalt look backward, behold what an infinite chaos of time doth present itself unto thee, and as infinite a chaos if thou shalt look forward. In that which is so infinite, what difference can there be between that which liveth but three days and that which liveth three ages? Stop worrying about what other people think. Honestly, who gives a damn? Contentment makes poor men rich. Discontent makes rich men poor. The soul is dyed the color of its thoughts. Think only on those things that are in line with your principles and can bear the light of day. The content of your character is your choice. Day by day, what you do is who you become. Your integrity is your destiny. It is the light that guides your way. Heraclitus Heraclitus 
Surround yourself with people who talk about visions and ideas, not people. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. The more you know, the less you need to say. Jim Rome. How a man on every occasion can maintain his proper character. To the rational animal only is the irrational intolerable, but that which is rational is tolerable. Blows are not naturally intolerable. How is that? See how the Lacedaemonians endure whipping when they have learned that whipping is consistent with reason. To hang yourself is not intolerable. When, then, you have the opinion that it is rational, you go and hang yourself. In short, if we observe, we shall find that the animal man is pained by nothing so much as by that which is irrational, and, on the contrary, attracted to nothing so much as to that which is rational. But the rational and the irrational appear such in a different way to different persons, just as the good and the bad, the profitable and the unprofitable. For this reason particularly, we need discipline in order to learn how to adapt the preconception of the rational and the irrational to the several things conformably to nature. But in order to determine the rational and the irrational, we use not only the of external things, but we consider also what is appropriate to each person. For to one man it is consistent with reason to hold a chamber pot for another, and to look to this only, that if he does not hold it, he will receive stripes, and he will not receive his food. But if he shall hold the pot, he will not suffer anything hard or disagreeable. But to another man not only does the holding of a chamber pot appear intolerable for himself, but intolerable also for him to allow another to do this office for him. If, then, you ask me whether you should hold the chamber pot or not, I shall say to you that the receiving of food is worth more than the not receiving of it, and the being scourged is a greater indignity than not being scourged, so that if you measure your interests by these things, go and hold the chamber pot. But this, you say, would not be worthy of me. Well then, it is you who must introduce this consideration into the inquiry, not I, for it is you who know yourself, how much you are worth to yourself, and at what price you sell yourself. For men sell themselves at various prices. For this reason, when Florus was deliberating whether he should go down to Nero's spectacles and also perform in them himself, Agrippinus said to him, Go down. And when Florus asked Agrippinus, Why do not you go down? Agrippinus replied, Because I do not even deliberate about the matter. For he who has once brought himself to deliberate about such matters, and to calculate the value of external things, comes very near to those who have forgotten their own character. For why do you ask me the question, whether death is preferable or life? I say, life. Pain or pleasure, I say pleasure. But if I do not take a part in the tragic acting, I shall have my head struck off. Go then and take a part. But I will not. Why? Because you consider yourself to be only one thread of those which are in the tunic. Well, then it was fitting for you to take care how you should be like the rest of men, just as the thread has no design to be anything superior to the other threads. But I wish to be purple, that small part which is bright and makes all the rest appear graceful and beautiful. Why then do you tell me to make myself like the many? And if I do, how shall I still be purple? Priscus Helvidius also saw this and acted conformably. For when Vespasian sent and commanded him not to go into the Senate, he replied, It is in your power not to allow me to be a member of the Senate, but so long as I am, I must go in. Well, Go in then, says the emperor, but say nothing. Do not ask my opinion, and I will be silent. But I must ask your opinion, and I must say what I think right. But if you do, I shall put you to death. When then did I tell you that I am immortal, 
You will do your part and I will do mine. It is your part to kill. It is mine to die, but not in fear. Yours to banish me, mine to depart without sorrow. What good then did Priscus do, who was only a single person? And what good does the purple do for the toga? Why, what else than this? that it is conspicuous in the toga as purple and is displayed also as a fine example to all other things. But in such circumstances, another would have replied to Caesar who forbade him to enter the Senate. I thank you for sparing me. But such a man Vespasian would not even have forbidden to enter the Senate, for he knew that he would either sit there like an earthen vessel, or if he spoke, he would say what Caesar wished and add even more. In this way, an athlete also acted who was in danger of dying unless his private parts were amputated. His brother came to the athlete who was a philosopher and said, Come, brother, what are you going to do? Shall we amputate this member and return to the gymnasium? But the athlete persisted in his resolution and died. When someone asked Epictetus how he did this, as an athlete or a philosopher, as a man, Epictetus replied, and a man who had been proclaimed among the athletes at the Olympic Games and had contended in them, a man who had been familiar with such a place, and not merely anointed in Baton school. Another would have allowed even his head to be cut off if he could have lived without it. Such is that regard to character which is so strong in those who have been accustomed to introduce it of themselves and conjoined with other things into their deliberations. Come then, Epictetus, shave yourself. If I am a philosopher, I answer, I will not shave myself. But I will take off your head? If that will do you any good, take it off. Some person asked, How then shall every man among us perceive what is suitable to his character? How, he replied, does the bull alone, when the lion has attacked, discover his own powers and put himself forward in defense of the whole herd? It is plain that with the powers the perception of having them is immediately conjoined, and therefore whoever of us has such powers will not be ignorant of them. Now a bull is not made suddenly nor a brave man, but we must discipline ourselves in the winter for the summer campaign and not rashly run upon that which does not concern us. Only consider at what price you sell your own will, if for no other reason, at least for this, that you sell it not for a small sum. But that which is great and superior perhaps belongs to Socrates, and such as are like him. Why then, if we are naturally such, are not a very great number of us like him? Is it true then that all horses become swift, that all dogs are skilled in tracking footprints? What then, since I am naturally dull, shall I for this reason take no pains? I hope not. Epictetus is not superior to Socrates, but if he is not inferior, this is enough for me. For I shall never be a Milo, and yet I do not neglect my body. Nor shall I be a Croesus, and yet I do not neglect my property. Nor, in a word, do we neglect looking after anything because we despair of reaching the highest degree. Your direction is more important than your speed. If you start by promising what you don't even have yet, you'll lose your desire to work towards getting it. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. John Lennon Do not act as if you were going to live 10,000 years. Death hangs over you while you live, while it is in your power. Be good. Obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off your goals. Guarding knowledge is not a good way to understand. Understanding means to throw away your knowledge. Tish not hunt.
But Socrates answered unto Perdiccas, why he did not come unto him. Lest of all deaths I should die the worst kind of death, said he, that is, not able to requite the good that hath been done unto me. Often a very old man has no other proof of his long life than his age. Victory over others gives strength. Victory over oneself gives fearlessness. We are like many pellets of incense falling on the same altar. Some collapse sooner, others later, but it makes no difference. Marcus Aurelius You can lie down for people to walk on you, and they will still complain that you are not flat enough. It is our attitude toward events, not events themselves, which we can control. Nothing is by its own nature calamitous. Even death is terrible only if we fear it. Vague goals produce vague results. Jack Canfield The sun seemeth to be shed abroad, and indeed it is diffused but not effused. For that diffusion of it is a tasis or an extension. For therefore are the beams of it called actines from the word actiniste, to be stretched out and extended. Now what a sunbeam is, thou mayest know if thou observe the light of the sun, when through some narrow hole it pierceth into some room that is dark, for it is always in a direct line, and as by any solid body that it meets with in the way that is not penetrable by air, it is divided and abrupted, and yet neither slides off or falls down, but stayeth there nevertheless. Such must the diffusion in the mind be, not an effusion, but an extension. What obstacles and impediments soever she meeteth within her way, she must not violently, and by way of an impetuous onset light upon them, neither must she fall down, but she must stand and give light unto that which doth admit of it. For as for that which doth not, it is its own fault and loss, if it bereave itself of her light. No regrets, just lessons. The best way to gain self-confidence is to do what you are afraid to do. Most people, when they are set upon looking into other people's affairs, never turn to examine themselves. Xenophon, Conversations of Socrates. Don't waste your time with explanations. People only hear what they want to hear. Not everyone has a heart like yours. You cannot always control what goes on outside, but you can always control what goes on inside. Wayne Dyer What portion soever, either of air or fire, there be in thee, although by nature it tend upwards, submitting nevertheless to the ordinance of the universe, it abides here below in this mixed body. So whatsoever is in thee, either earthy or humid, although by nature it tend downwards, yet is it against its nature both raised upwards and standing or consistent. So obedient are even the elements themselves to the universe, abiding patiently wheresoever, though against their nature, they are placed until the sound, as it were, of their retreat and separation. Is it not a grievous thing, then, that thy reasonable part only should be disobedient, and should not endure to keep its place? Yea, though it be nothing enjoined that is contrary unto it, but that only which is according to its nature. For we cannot say of it when it is disobedient, as we say of the fire, or air, that it tends upwards towards its proper element, for then goes it the quite contrary way. For the motion of the mind to any injustice 
or incontinency, or to sorrow, or to fear, is nothing else but a separation from nature. Also, when the mind is grieved for anything that has happened by the divine providence, then doth it likewise forsake its own place, for it was ordained unto holiness and godliness, which specially consist in an humble submission to God and his providence in all things, as well as unto justice. These also being part of those duties, which as naturally sociable we are bound unto, and without which we cannot happily converse one with another, yea, in the very ground and fountain indeed of all just actions. It's easy to say you want something, but it's hard to actually make it happen. Don't moan, don't complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. Make the most of what you can. I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Booker T. Washington When in doubt, tell the truth. Anyone who keeps the ability to see beauty never grows old. No valid plans for the future can be made by those who have no capacity for living now. Alan Watts He that seeth the things that are now hath seen all that either was ever or ever shall be, for all things are of one kind, and all like one unto another. Meditate often upon the connection of all things in the world, and upon the mutual relation that they have one unto another. For all things are after a sort folded and involved one within another, and by these means all agree well together. For one thing is consequent unto another, by local motion, by natural conspiration and agreement, and by substantial union, or reduction of all substances into one. You may not realize this, but the people you love are your biggest weaknesses. What really ruins our character is the fact that none of us looks back over his life. Not what we have but what we enjoy constitutes our abundance. Epicurus You can't trust a man who has nothing to lose. A man must always hide three things from a woman. His fears, so she believes in his strength. His mistakes, so she believes in his wisdom and his dreams, so he can surprise her with their realization. You must take personal responsibility. You cannot change the circumstances, the seasons, or the wind, but you can change yourself. Jack Canfield It is foolish to wish that your children and your wife and your friends should live forever, for you are wishing for things to be in your power which are not, and wishing for what belongs to others to be your own. It is foolish in the same way, too, to wish that your slave boy should never do wrong, for now you want badness not to be badness, but something else. However, if you wish not to fail in what you desire, this you are able to do. Exercise yourself, therefore, in what you are able to do. 2. A personal Tem's master is the one who has power over that which is wished for or not wished for, so as to secure it or take it away. Therefore, anyone who wishes to be free should neither wish for anything nor avoid anything that depends on others. Those who do not observe this rule will of necessity be the slaves of others. 
Holding on to things will always make you more stressed. Experience is the teacher of all things. The ultimate aim of martial arts is not having to use them. Get beyond love and grief. Exist for the good of man. Miyamoto Musashi You'll never find a rainbow if you're looking down. Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I'm about to criticize? To realize the truth is to find yourself and to understand who you are. Muji For it is not the part of a man that is a man indeed, to desire to live long or to make much of his life whilst he liveth, but rather, he that is such, will in these things wholly refer himself unto the gods, and believing that which every woman can tell him, that no man can escape death. The only thing that he takes thought and care for is this, that what time he liveth, he may live as well and as virtuously as he can possibly, to look about, and with the eyes to follow the course of the stars and planets as though thou wouldst run with them, and to mind perpetually the several changes of the elements one into another, for such fancies and imaginations help much to purge away the dross and filth of this our earthly life. That also is a fine passage of Plato's, where he speaketh of worldly things in these words. Thou must also, as from some higher place, look down, as it were, upon the things of this world, as flocks, armies, husbandmen's labors, marriages, divorces, generations, deaths, the tumults of courts and places of judicatures, desert places, the several nations of barbarians, public festivals, mornings, fairs, markets, how all things upon earth are pell-mell, and how miraculously things contrary one to another concur to the beauty and perfection of this universe. When a man moves away from nature, his heart becomes hard. A high degree of intellect tends to make a man unsocial. Act as if what you do makes a difference. It does. William James You want to control someone? All you have to do is make them feel afraid. Life is far from over, but it's very short, too. You leave old habits behind by starting out with the thought, I release the need for this in my life. Wayne Dyer Let not things future trouble thee, for if necessity so require that they come to pass, Thou shalt, whensoever that is, be provided for them with the same reason by which whatsoever is now present is made both tolerable and acceptable unto thee. All things are linked and knitted together, and the knot is sacred. Neither is there anything in the world that is not kind and natural in regard of any other thing, or that hath not some kind of reference and natural correspondence with whatsoever is in the world besides. For all things are ranked together, and by that decency of its due place and order that each particular doth observe, they all concur together to the making of one and the same cosmos or world. As if you said, a comely piece, or an orderly composition. For all things throughout, there is but one and the same order, and through all things, one and the same God, the same substance and the same law. There is one common reason and one common truth that belongs unto all reasonable creatures. 
for neither is there save one perfection of all creatures that are of the same kind and partakers of the same reason. Don't give up after the first failure. Failure is not the end. It's just a detour on the road to success. Women make even the men more sophisticated. The soul is immortal and will never die. Plato This quote reflects Plato's belief in the transmigration of souls and the continuing existence of the soul beyond physical death. Arouse the other person to an eager want. He who can do this has the whole world with him. Appear weak when you are strong, strong when you are weak. You are not the body. You are the awareness that witnesses the body. Nisargadatta Maharaj It were indeed more happy and comfortable for a man to depart out of this world having lived all his life long clear from all falsehood, dissimulation, voluptuousness and pride. But if this cannot be, yet it is some comfort for a man joyfully to depart as weary and out of love with those, rather than to desire to live and to continue long in those wicked courses. Hath not yet experience taught thee to fly from the plague? For a far greater plague is the corruption of the mind than any certain change and distemper of the common air can be. This is a plague of creatures as they are living creatures, but that of men as they are men or reasonable. Avoid people who use their pain as an excuse to hurt you. Learn to say no without explaining yourself. Failure is the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Henry Ford Because the thing seems difficult for you, do not think it impossible for anyone to accomplish. Stress is temporary, but the lessons you learn from it can last a lifetime. If you view all the things that happen to you, both good and bad, as opportunities, then you operate out of a higher level of consciousness. Les Brown Augustus, his court, his wife, his daughter, his nephews, his sons-in-law, his sister, Agrippa, his kinsmen, his domestics, his friends, Arius, Amaldras, Sinas, his slayers of beasts for sacrifice and divination, there thou hast the death of a whole court together. Proceed now unto the rest that have been since that of Augustus. Hath death dwelt with them otherwise, though so many and so stately whilst they lived, than it doth use to deal with any one particular man? Consider now the death of a whole kindred and family, as of that of the Pompeys, as that also that useth to be written upon some monuments, he was the last of his own kindred. Oh, what care did his predecessors take, that they might leave a successor, yet behold, at last one or other must of necessity be the last. Here again, therefore, consider the death of a whole kindred. Comparison is the thief of joy. Focus on your path, not someone else's. Never take for granted the time you spend with the people you keep. It could be over any day. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Steve Jobs What is life? It is a flash of a firefly in the night. 
It is a breath of a buffalo in the wintertime. It is as the little shadow that runs across the grass and loses itself in the sunset. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. If you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you'll spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living. That is, to go on doing things you don't like doing. Alan Watts Suppose that at the palestra somebody hath all to torn thee with his nails, and hath broken thy head. Well, thou art wounded, yet thou dost not exclaim, thou art not offended with him. Thou dost not suspect him for it afterwards, as one that watcheth to do thee a mischief. Yea, even then, though thou dost thy best to save thyself from him, yet not from him as an enemy, it is not by way of any suspicious indignation, but by way of gentle and friendly declination. Keep the same mind and disposition in other parts of thy life also, for many things there be, which we must conceit and apprehend, as though we had had to do with an antagonist at the palestra. For as I said, it is very possible for us to avoid and decline, though we neither suspect nor hate. You have to believe in yourself, there is nothing softer and more flexible than water, but try to resist it. Just because you got away with a bad decision doesn't make it a good decision. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha Be slow in choosing a friend, slower in changing. Nothing is actually as bad as it seems, or as great as you think it will be. It's not about what you have, or even what you've accomplished. It's about who you've lifted up, who you've made better. It's about what you've given back. Jay Shetty What those things are in themselves which by the greatest part are esteemed good, thou mayest gather even from this. For if a man shall hear things mentioned as good, which are really good indeed, such as our prudence, temperance, justice, fortitude, after so much heard and conceived, he cannot endure to hear of any more, for the word good is properly spoken of them. But as for those which by the vulgar are esteemed good, if he shall hear them mentioned as good, he doth hearken for more. He is well contented to hear that what is spoken by the comedian is but familiarly and popularly spoken, so that even the vulgar apprehend the difference. For why is it else that this offends not and needs not to be excused, when virtues are styled good, but that which is spoken in commendation of wealth, pleasure, or honor, we entertain it only as merrily and pleasantly spoken? Proceed, therefore, and inquire further, whether it may not be that those things also, which being mentioned upon the stage were merrily and with great applause of the multitude, scoffed at with this jest, that they that possessed them had not in all the world of their own, such was their affluence and plenty, so much as a place where to avoid their excrements, whether, I say, those ought not also in very deed to be much respected and esteemed of, as the only things that are truly good. It is unrealistic to expect people to see you as you see yourself. Life did not intend to make us perfect. Whoever is perfect belongs in a museum.
A bad feeling is a commotion of the mind, repugnant to reason and against nature. Zeno Educate your children to self-control, to the habit of holding possession and prejudice and evil tendencies subject to an upright and reasoning will, and you will have done much to abolish misery from their future and crimes from society. Do not focus on perfection or control. You are not in control of anything, and there is no such thing as perfection. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Jim Rohn To those who recommend persons to philosophers, Diogenes said well to one who asked from him letters of recommendation, that you are a man, he said, he will know as soon as he sees you, and he will know whether you are good or bad, if he is by experience skillful to distinguish the good and the bad. But if he is without experience, he will never know, if I write to him ten thousand times. For it is just the same as if a drachma asked to be recommended to a person to be tested. If he is skillful in testing silver, he will know what you are, for you will recommend yourself. We ought then in life also to have some skill, as in the case of silver coin, that a man may be able to say, like the judge of silver, Bring me any drachma and I will test it. But in the case of syllogisms I would say, Bring any man that you please, and I will distinguish for you the man who knows how to resolve syllogisms and the man who does not. Why? Because I know how to resolve syllogisms. I have the power, which a man must have who is able to discover those who have the power of resolving syllogisms. But in life how do I act? At one time I call a thing good and at another time bad. What is the reason? the contrary to that which is in the case of syllogisms, ignorance, and inexperience. Sometimes it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. Overtrusting, betrayal, masturbation, loss of energy, stress, hair loss, overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, letting go, peace of mind. Nothing to my way of thinking is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. Seneca Loneliness isn't the absence of people, it's the absence of connection. Seek meaningful interactions, not just company. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. The truth is that you are not separate from the universe. Nisargadatta Maharaj The Pythagoreans were wont betimes in the morning the first thing they did, to look up unto the heavens to put themselves in mind of them who constantly and invariably did perform their task, as also to put themselves in mind of orderliness, or good order, and of purity, and of naked simplicity, for no star or planet hath any cover before it. It is good to be generous, benign, and magnanimous, but there's a limit, or you'll be taken for granted.
who reflects too much will accomplish little. When you reach the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. Franklin D. Roosevelt Rich people avoid two things in life, stupid company and stupid spending. The graveyard is full of people who used to think that the world could not run without them. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct acting from inner necessity. The creative mind plays with the objects it loves. Carl Jung Who can choose but wonder at them? They will not speak well of them that are at the same time with them and live with them. Yet they themselves are very ambitious that they that shall follow, whom they have never seen, nor shall ever see, should speak well of them. As if a man should grieve that he hath not been commended by them that lived before him. If you are tired, learn to rest, not to quit. Failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. I am a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts. Abraham Lincoln Nothing is permanent in this wicked world, not even our troubles. All failures are temporary when you keep trying. Without a sense of urgency, desire loses its value. Jim Rohn In what manner we ought to bear sickness? When the need of each opinion comes, we ought to have it in readiness. On the occasion of breakfast, such as relate to breakfast, in the bath, those that concern the bath, in bed, those that concern bed. Let sleep not come upon thy languid eyes before each daily action thou hast scanned. What's done amiss, what done, what left undone, from first to last examine all, and then blame what is wrong and what is right rejoice. And we ought to retain these verses in such way that we may use them, not that we may utter them aloud as when we exclaim Pian Apollo. Again in fever we should have ready such opinions as concern a fever, and we ought not, as soon as the fever begins, to lose and forget all. A man who has a fever, may if I philosophize any longer, may I be hanged. Wherever I go I must take care of the poor body, that a fever may not come. But what is philosophizing? Is it not a preparation against events which may happen? Do you not understand that you are saying something of this kind? If I shall still prepare myself to bear with patience what happens, may I be hanged. But this is just as if a man after receiving blows should give up the pancratium. In the pancratium it is in our power to desist and not to receive blows. But in the other matter we give up philosophy. What shall we gain, I gain? What then should a man say on the occasion of each painful thing? It was for this that I exercised myself. For this I disciplined myself. God says to you, Give me a proof that you have duly practiced athletics, that you have eaten what you ought, that you have been exercised, that you have obeyed the elliptes. Then do you show yourself weak when the time for action comes. Now is the time for the fever. Let it be born well. Now is the time for thirst well. Now is the time for hunger. Bear it well. Is it not in your power? Who shall hinder you? The physician will hinder you from drinking, but he cannot prevent you from bearing thirst well, and he will hinder you from eating, 
but he cannot prevent you from bearing hunger well. But I cannot attend to my philosophical studies. And for what purpose do you follow them? Slave, is it not that you may be happy, that you may be constant? Is it not that you may be in a state conformable to nature and live so? What hinders you when you have a fever from having your ruling faculty conformable to nature? Here is the proof of the thing. Here is the test of the philosopher. For this also is a part of life, like walking, like sailing, like journeying by land. So also is fever. Do you read when you are walking? No. Nor do you when you have a fever. If you walk about well, you have all that belongs to a man who walks. If you bear fever well, you have all that belongs to a man in a fever. What is it to bear a fever well? Not to blame God or man. Not to be afflicted at that which happens. To expect death well and nobly. To do what must be done. When the physician comes in, not to be frightened at what he says. Nor if he says, you are doing well, to be overjoyed. For what good has he told you? And when you were in health, what good was that to you? And even if he says, you are in a bad way, do not despond. For what is it to be ill? Is it that you are near the severance of the soul and the body? What harm is there in this? If you are not near now, will you not afterward be near? Is the world going to be turned upside down when you are dead? Why then do you flatter the physician? Why do you say, if you please, master, I shall be well? Why do you give him an opportunity of raising his eyebrows? Do you not value a physician as you do a shoemaker when he is measuring your foot, or a carpenter when he is building your house, and so treat the physician as to the body which is not yours, but by nature dead? He who has a fever has an opportunity of doing this. If he does these things, he has what belongs to him. For it is not the business of a philosopher to look after these externals, neither his wine nor his oil nor his poor body, but his own ruling power. But as to externals, how must he act, so far as not to be careless about them? Where then is there reason for fear? Where is there then still reason for anger and a fear about what belongs to others, about things which are of no value? For we ought to have these two principles in readiness, that except the will nothing is good nor bad, and that we ought not to lead events, but to follow them. My brother ought not to have behaved thus to me. No, but he will see to that. And however he may behave, I will conduct myself toward him as I ought. For this is my own business. That belongs to another. No man can prevent this. The other thing can be hindered. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the favorable wind. Go to foreign countries and you will get to know the good things one possesses at home. The content of your character is your choice. Day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. Heraclitus Our wounds are often the openings into the best and most beautiful part of us. Stop worrying about what other people think. Honestly, who gives a damn? We are meant to love people and use things, but today we use people and love things. Jay Shetty Those who possess the power to defend themselves against threats by their neighbors, being thus in possession of the surest guarantee of security, live the most pleasant life with one another, and their enjoyment of the fullest intimacy is such that if one of them dies prematurely, 
the others do not lament his death as though it called for pity. Not everything in this world should be your problem. Some things are simply none of your business. First it hurts, then it makes you stronger. As fire tests gold, so misfortunate tests brave men. Seneca It does not require many words to speak the truth. If you make a mistake and do not correct it, this is called a mistake. You don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Les Brown Consider how many different things, whether they concern our bodies or our souls, in a moment of time come to pass in every one of us, and so thou wilt not wonder if many more things, or rather all things that are done, can at one time subsist and coexist in that both one and general, which we call the world. Value experience over possessions because memories are the real treasures of life. Believe nothing you hear and only one half that you see. A wise man makes his own decisions. An ignorant man follows public opinion. Chinese proverb. If you're right but you're obnoxious about it, people won't see you as the good guy. Never compare yourself to others. No one can play your role better than you. You are the creator of your own experiences. Neville Goddard Toxicity Toxicity refers to the quality of being very harmful or unpleasant to oneself. Toxic emotions and the manifestations of certain behaviors can be found in almost every aspect of your life, but only if you allow it. The teachings of the great Stoics emphasize the notion of accepting what you cannot control. By living the Stoic life, you are in total control of your own mental hygiene. You have the choice to limit the amount of destructive behaviors within you and the amount you inflict onto others. This makes you responsible for your own toxicity. The harmfulness can significantly impact your daily functioning and the regulation of your moods and emotions. You must identify the origin, acknowledge, and then accept that you have the power to change. Remind yourself that allowing toxicity to live within you relinquishes control over your own life and well-being. Choose to live a toxic-free lifestyle and let the great Stoics be your guide. He who has injured thee was either stronger or weaker than thee. If weaker, spare him. If stronger, spare thyself. Be humble enough to know you can lose everything, but be confident enough to know you can get it all back. Quid quid Latin dictum sit, altum viditur. Whatever is said in Latin sounds profound. Latin joke. When you get up in the morning, remember what you promised yourself at night. Normalize walking some paths alone because goals are personal. Success is the sum of small efforts, repeated day in and day out. Jack Canfield
to grow together like fellow branches in matter of good correspondence and affection, but not in matter of opinions. They that shall oppose thee in thy right courses, as it is not in their power to divert thee from thy good action, so neither let it be to divert thee from thy good affection towards them. But be it thy care to keep thyself constant in both, both in a right judgment and action, and in true meekness towards them, that either shall do their endeavor to hinder thee, or at least will be displeased with thee for what thou hast done. For to fail in either, either in the one to give over for fear, or in the other to forsake thy natural affection towards him, who by nature is both thy friend and thy kinsman, is equally base and much savoring of the disposition of a cowardly fugitive soldier. Develop success from failures. Discouragement and failure are two of the greatest stepping stones to success. Be careful who you trust. Salt and sugar look the same. Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. Chinese proverb. The pain you feel today will be the strength you feel tomorrow. Never let the same people disappoint you twice. People will do anything no matter how absurd to avoid facing their own souls. Carl Jung Do not demand that things should happen just as you wish, but wish them to happen just as they do and all will be well. As long as you are alive, no obstacle is permanent. No matter how thin you slice it, there will always be two sides. If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, Inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. Chinese proverb. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. The quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Tony Robbins I will attach myself as a minister and follower to him. I have the same movements as he has. I have the same desires. In a word, I have the same will. There is no shutting out for me, but for those who would force their in. Why then do not I force my way in? Because I know that nothing good is distributed within to those who enter. But when I hear any man called fortunate because he is honored by Caesar, I say, what does he happen to get? A province. Does he also obtain an opinion such as he ought? The office of a prefect. Does he also obtain the power of using his office well? Why do I still strive to enter? A man scatters dried figs and nuts. The children seize them and fight with one another. Men do not, for they think them to be a small matter. But if a man should throw about shells, even the children do not seize them. Provinces are distributed. Let children look to that. Money is distributed. Let children look to that. Praetorships, consulships are distributed. Let children scramble for them. Let them be shut out, beaten, kiss the hands of the giver, of the slaves. But to me these are only dried figs and nuts. What then? If you fail to get them, 
while Caesar is scattering them about. Do not be troubled. If a dried fig come into your lap, take it and eat it, for so far you may value even a fig. But if I shall stoop down and turn another over, or be turned over by another, and shall flatter those who have got into chamber, neither is a dried fig worth the trouble, nor anything else of the things which are not good, which the philosophers have persuaded me not to think good. Show me the swords of the guards, see how big they are, and how sharp. What then do these big and sharp swords do? They kill. And what does a fever do? Nothing else. And what else a tile? Nothing else. Would you then have me to wonder at these things and worship them, and go about as the slave of all of them? I hope that this will not happen. But when I have once learned that everything which has come into existence must also go out of it, that the universe may not stand still nor be impeded. I no longer consider it any difference whether a fever shall do it, or a tile, or a soldier. But if a man must make a comparison between these things, I know that the soldier will do it with less trouble and quicker. When, then, I neither fear anything which a tyrant can do to me, nor desire anything which he can give, why do I still look on with wonder? Why am I still confounded? Why do I fear the guards? Why am I pleased if he speaks to me in a friendly way and receives me? And why do I tell others how he spoke to me? Is he a Socrates? Is he a Diogenes that his praise should be a proof of what I am? Have I been eager to imitate his morals? But I keep up the play and go to him and serve him so long as he does not bid me to do anything foolish or unreasonable. But if he says to me, Go and bring Leon of Salamis. I say to him, Seek another, for I am no longer playing. Lead him away. I follow, that is part of the play. But your head will be taken off. Does the tyrant's head always remain where it is and the heads of you who obey him? But you will be cast out unburied. If the corpse is I, I shall be cast out. But if I am different from the corpse, Speak more properly according as the fact is, and do not think of frightening me. These things are formidable to children and fools. But if any man has once entered a philosopher's school and knows not what he is, he deserves to be full of fear and to flatter those whom afterward he used to flatter. If he has not yet learned that he is not flesh, nor bones, nor sinews, but he is that which makes use of these parts of the body, and governs them, and follows the appearances of things. Yes, but this talk makes us despise the laws. And what kind of talk makes men more obedient to the laws who employ such talk? And the things which are in the power of a fool are not law. And yet see how this talk makes us disposed as we ought to be even to these men since it teaches us to claim in opposition to them none of the things in which they are able to surpass us. This talk teaches us, as to the body, to give it up, as to property, to give that up also, as to children, parents, brothers, to retire from these, to give up all. It only makes an exception of the opinions, which even Zeus has willed to be the select property of every man. What transgression of the laws is there here? What folly? Where you are superior and stronger, there I give way to you. On the other hand, where I am superior, do you yield to me? For I have studied this, and you have not. It is your study to live in houses with floors formed of various stones, how your slaves and dependents shall serve you, how you shall wear fine clothing, have many hunting men, lute players, and tragic actors. Do I claim any of these? Have you made any study of opinions and of your own rational faculty? Do you know of what parts it is composed? How they are brought together? How they are connected? What powers it has? And of what kind? Why then are you vexed? If another, who has made it his study, has the advantage over you in these things. But these things are the greatest. 
and who hinders you from being employed about these things and looking after them and who has a better stock of books of leisure of persons to aid you only turn your mind at last to these things attend if it be only a short time to your own ruling faculty consider what this is that you possess and whence it came this which uses all others and tries them and selects and rejects but so long as you employ yourself about externals you will possess them as no man else does but you will have this such as you choose to have it sordid and neglected kindness without honesty is manipulation don't be scared to set boundaries in your relationships if they walk away it means you're better off without them deaths that are greater greater portions gain Heraclitus if you're being judged no matter what so be who you want to be you will never find a friend who will be as faithful as an old wife an old dog and ready money Anxiety, the illness of our time, comes primarily from our inability to dwell in the present moment. Thich Nhat Hanh. These things thou must always have in mind. What is the nature of the universe, and what is mine, in particular? This unto that what relation it hath. What kind of part, of what kind of universe it is and that there is nobody that can hinder thee, but that thou mayest always both do and speak those things which are agreeable to that nature, whereof thou art a part. If you're right but you're obnoxious about it, people won't see you as the good guy. It's the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life interesting. Talk sense to a fool and he calls you foolish. Euripides. Everything can be taken from a man, but one thing, the last of the human freedoms. To choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Leave the house messy the yard unmowed for the weekend. You will remember the fun, not the clean house or yard. Make time for fun. Your goals are the roadmaps that guide you and show you what is possible for your life. Les Brown. O my soul, the time I trust will be, when thou shalt be good, simple, single, more open and visible, than that body by which it is enclosed. Thou wilt one day be sensible of their happiness, whose end is love, and their affections dead to all worldly things. Thou shalt one day be full, and in want of no external thing, not seeking pleasure from anything, either living or insensible, that this world can afford, neither wanting time for the continuation of thy pleasure, nor place and opportunity, nor the favor either of the weather or of men, when thou shalt have content in thy present estate, and all things present shall add to thy content, when thou shalt persuade thyself that thou hast all things, all for thy good, and all by the providence of the gods, and of things future also shalt be as confident, that all will do well, as tending to the maintenance and preservation in some sort of his perfect welfare and happiness, who is perfection of life, of goodness and beauty, who begets all things, and containeth all things in himself, and in himself doth recollect all things from all places that are dissolved, that of them he may beget others again like unto them. Such one day shall be thy disposition, 
that thou shalt be able both in regard of the gods and in regard of men, so to fit and order thy conversation, as neither to complain of them at any time for anything that they do, nor to do anything thyself for which thou mayest justly be condemned. Be extremely subtle, even to the point of formlessness. Be extremely mysterious, even to the point of soundlessness. Thereby you can be the director of the opponent's fate. You attract what you are. You want to attract better? Become better. Wishing to be friends is quick work, but friendship is a slow ripening fruit. Aristotle Overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, letting go, peace of mind. Be like the fountain that overflows, not like the cistern that nearly contains. Keeping your body healthy is an expression of gratitude to the whole cosmos, the trees, the clouds, everything. Tishnat Han And as the whole world is made up of all the particular bodies of the world, one perfect and complete body, of the same nature that particular bodies, so is the destiny of particular causes and events one general one, of the same nature that particular causes are. What I now say, even they that are mere idiots are not ignorant of, for they say commonly tuto efferenafto, that is, this his destiny hath brought upon him. This therefore is by the fates properly and particularly brought upon this, as that unto this in particular is by the physician prescribed. These therefore let us accept of in like manner, as we do those that are prescribed unto us our physicians. For them also in themselves shall we find to contain many harsh things, but we nevertheless in hope of health and recovery, accept of them. Let the fulfilling and accomplishment of those things which the common nature hath determined be unto thee as thy health. Accept then, and be pleased with whatsoever doth happen, though otherwise harsh and unpleasing, as tending to that end, to the health and welfare of the universe, and to Jove's happiness and prosperity. If you are alone for a long time, soon you will accept loneliness. You will never know your potential if you are afraid to be alone. In order to love who you are, you cannot hate the experiences that shaped you. Glory follows virtue as if it were its shadow. Cicero Talking without thinking is like shooting without aiming. Women are meant to be loved, not to be understood. Learn how to be happy with what you have while you pursue all that you want. Jim Rohn To live happily is an inward power of the soul when she is affected with indifferency towards those things that are by their nature indifferent. To be thus affected, she must consider all worldly objects both divided and whole, remembering withal that no object can of itself beget any opinion in us, neither can come to us, but stands without still and quiet, but that we ourselves beget, and as it were print in ourselves opinions concerning them. Now it is in our power not to print them, and if they creep in and lurk in some corner, it is in our power to wipe them off. Remembering, moreover, that this care and circumspection of thine 
is to continue but for a while, and then thy life will be at an end. And what should hinder but that thou mayest do well with all these things? For if they be according to nature, rejoice in them, and let them be pleasing and acceptable unto thee. But if they be against nature, seek thou that which is according to thine own nature, and whether it be for thy credit or no, use all possible speed for the attainment of it, for no man ought to be blamed for seeking his own good and happiness. We must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul, just as a meal does for the body. It is better to act and repent than not to act and regret. No man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he's not the same man. Heraclitus Sometimes a person doesn't want to hear the truth because they don't want their illusions destroyed. Remove the clowns from your life before you become one. I encourage you to accept that you may not be able to see a path right now, but that doesn't mean it's not there, Nick Vujicic. Remember that you are an actor in a play of such a kind as the playwright chooses, short if he wants it short, long if he wants it long. If he wants you to play the part of a beggar, play even this part well, and so also for the parts of a disabled person, an administrator, or a private individual. For this is your business, to play well the part you are given, but choosing it belongs to another. Failure is not proof, it is information. Spend your money on the things money can buy. Spend your time on the things money can't buy. Good actions give strength to ourselves and inspire good actions in others. This quote emphasizes the ripple effect of our actions both positive and negative, and encourages us to strive for virtuous behavior for the benefit of ourselves and others. They are not dead who live in the hearts they leave behind. If you don't control your mind, someone else will. Your life is the space in which all things happen. Eckhart Tolle When thou wilt comfort and cheer thyself, call to mind the several gifts and virtues of them whom thou dost daily converse with, as for example the industry of the one, the modesty of another, the liberality of a third, of another some other thing. For nothing can so much rejoice thee as the resemblances and parallels of several virtues, visible and eminent in the dispositions of those who live with thee, especially when, all at once, as near as may be, they represent themselves unto thee, and therefore thou must have them always in a readiness. No one is too busy. It's only a matter of priorities. Numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. A man who has committed a mistake and doesn't correct it is committing another mistake. Confucius Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. Hurry before 30, have kids before 35, 
Work and earn actively and sufficiently until and before 40. Make passive income workable before 50. Plan to retire from work activity before 60. Do everything for family, but expect nothing from it, not even from your spouse. The self is always present. You only need to recognize it. Papaji Where the matter may be affected agreeably to that reason, which both unto the gods and men is common, there can be no just cause of grief or sorrow. For where the fruit and benefit of an action well begun and prosecuted according to the proper constitution of man may be reaped and obtained, or is sure and certain, it is against reason that any damage should there be suspected. In all places and at all times, it is in thy power religiously to embrace whatsoever, by God's appointment, is happened unto thee, and justly to converse with those men whom thou hast to do with and accurately to examine every fancy that presents itself, that nothing may slip and steal in, before thou hast rightly apprehended the true nature of it. A moment of patience and a moment of anger saves from a thousand minutes of regret. Respect yourself and others will respect you. The truth is, like a lion, you don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. Augustine of Hippo You need something to fall back on when you get depressed. Find something you love, something you can lean on to, something that would keep you going. Judge no one, just improve yourself. It's what you practice in private that you will be rewarded for in public. Tony Robbins As several members in one body united, so are reasonable creatures in a body divided and dispersed, all made and prepared for one common operation. And this thou shalt apprehend the better, if thou shalt use thyself often to say to thyself, I am Melos, or a member of the mass and body of reasonable substances. But if thou shalt say, I am Meros, or a part, thou dost not yet love men from thy heart. The joy that thou takest in the exercise of bounty is not yet grounded upon a due ratiocination and right apprehension of the nature of things. Thou dost exercise it as yet upon this ground barely, as a thing convenient and fitting, not as doing good to thyself when thou dost good unto others. Sometimes, which choice you make is not as important as making a choice and committing to it. Trust is easy to build but can be shattered in seconds. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. John F. Kennedy It's easy to fool someone. It's hard to convince them that they've been fooled. Remember, any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. If you love someone, the greatest gift you can give them is your presence. Thich Nhat Hanh. Nature. The Stoic's ultimate goal is to live in accordance with nature, to be one with nature and live harmoniously, to appreciate and gain an understanding of your place in the world, to
to practice your ability to see things greater than yourself and live a virtuous life. Living according to nature is living your best life. Living your best life is done by maximizing your potential, by recognizing the difference between what you can control and what is out of your control. You must be honest with yourself and others and be willing to seek the truth in every circumstance. By doing so, you must also see challenges as a way to progress and not as a setback. Seek to find the good in every situation and use it as a teaching tool. Let nature be your guiding force and your moral compass on your positive pathway in life. Be kind to people without allowing them to take advantage of your good nature. Ultimately, the people who mind don't matter, and the people who matter don't mind. The rights of every man are diminished when the rights of one man are threatened. John F. Kennedy Work as if you were to live a thousand years. Play as if you were to die tomorrow. Whatever happens at all happens as it should. You will find this true if you watch narrowly. Your purpose in life is to find your purpose and give your whole heart and soul to it. Deepak Chopra Either all things by the providence of reason happen unto every particular as a part of one general body, and then it is against reason that a part should complain of anything that happens for the good of the whole, or if, according to Epicurus, atoms be the cause of all things, and that life be nothing else but an accidentary confusion of things, and death nothing else but a mere dispersion, and so of all other things. What doest thou trouble thyself for? If you want to be better than someone else, that's the reason why you aren't. If they don't appreciate you, they don't deserve you. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. Chinese proverb. Life is not fair, but it's still good. When you arise in the morning, think of what a privilege it is to be alive, to think, to enjoy, to love. Anything that's happened to you has happened for a reason. Wayne Dyer As occasion shall require, either to thine own understanding, or to that of the universe, or to his, whom thou hast now to do with, let thy refuge be with all speed, to thine own, that it resolve upon nothing against justice, to that of the universe, that thou mayest remember, part of whom thou art, of his, that thou mayest consider whether in the estate of ignorance, or of knowledge, and then also must thou call to mind, that he is thy kinsman. To be well is a part of becoming well. People come and go. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor Roosevelt Fear is temporary. Regret is forever. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Your greatest asset is your earning ability. 
Your greatest resource is your time. Brian Tracy Of finery in dress A certain young man, a rhetorician, came to see Epictetus, with his hair dressed more carefully than was usual, and his attire in an ornamental style. Whereupon Epictetus said, Tell me you do not think that some dogs are beautiful and some horses, and so of all other animals. I do think so, the youth replied. Are not then some men also beautiful and others ugly? Certainly. Do we then, for the same reason, call each of them in the same kind beautiful, or each beautiful for something peculiar? And you will judge of this matter thus, since we see a dog naturally formed for one thing, and a horse for another, and for another still, as an example a nightingale, we may generally and not improperly declare each of them to be beautiful then when it is most excellent according to its nature. But since the nature of each is different, each of them seems to me to be beautiful in a different way. Is it not so? He admitted that it was that then which makes a dog beautiful makes a horse ugly, and that which makes a horse beautiful makes a dog ugly, if it is true that their natures are different. It seems to be so, for I think that what makes a Pancratius beautiful makes a wrestler to be not good, and a runner to be most ridiculous, and he who is beautiful for the pentathlon is very ugly for wrestling. It is so said he. What then makes a man beautiful? Is that which in its kind makes both a dog and a horse beautiful? It is, he said. What then makes a dog beautiful? The possession of the excellence of a dog. And what makes a horse beautiful? The possession of the excellence of a horse. What then makes a man beautiful? Is it not the possession of the excellence of a man? And do you then, if you wish to be beautiful, young man, labor at this, the acquisition of human excellence? But what is this? Observe whom you yourself praise when you praise many persons without partiality. Do you praise the just or the unjust? The just. Whether do you praise the moderate or the immoderate? The moderate. And the temperate or the intemperate? the temperate. If, then, you make yourself such a person, you will know that you will make yourself beautiful. But so long as you neglect these things, you must be ugly, even though you contrive all you can to appear beautiful. Further, I do not know what to say to you. For if I say to you what I think, I shall offend you, and you will perhaps leave the school and not return to it. And if I do not say what I think, see how I shall be acting, if you come to me to be improved, and I shall not improve you at all. And if you come to me as to a philosopher, and I shall say nothing to you as a philosopher, and how cruel it is to you to leave you uncorrected, if at any time afterward you shall acquire sense, you will with good reason blame me and say, what did Epictetus observe in me that when he saw me in such a plight coming to him in such a scandalous condition, he neglected me and never said a word? Did he so much despair of me? Was I not young? Was I not able to listen to reason? And how many other young men at this age commit many like errors? I hear that a certain Polmon from being a most dissolute youth underwent such a great change. Well, suppose that he did not think that I should be a Polmon. Yet he might have set my hair right. He might have stripped off my decorations. He might have stopped me from plucking the hair out of my body. But when he saw me dressed like, what shall I say? He kept silent. I do not say like what, but you will say, when you come to your senses and shall know what it is, and what persons use such a dress. If you bring this charge against me hereafter, what defense shall I make? Why shall I say that the man will not be persuaded by me? 
Was Laius persuaded by Apollo? Did he and get drunk and show no care for the oracle? Well then, for this reason did Apollo refuse to tell him the truth. I indeed do not know whether you will be persuaded by me or not, but Apollo knew most certainly that Laius would not be persuaded, and yet he spoke. But why did he speak? I say in reply, but why is he Apollo? And why does he deliver oracles? And why has he fixed himself in this place as a prophet and source of truth, and for the inhabitants of the world to resort to him? And why are the words, Know Yourself, written in front of the temple, though no person takes any notice of them? Did Socrates persuade all his hearers to take care of themselves? Not the thousandth part. But however, after he had been placed in this position by the deity, as he himself says, he never left it. But what does he say even to his judges? If you acquit me on these conditions that I no longer do that which I do now, I will not consent, and I will not desist, but I will go up both to young and to old, and to speak plainly, to every man whom I meet, and I will ask the questions which I ask now, and most particularly will I do this to you, my fellow citizens, because you are more nearly related to me. Most of the time you have to swallow the pain and learn to grow up by yourself. Your respect at most places is directly proportional to your bank balance. There is no limit to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. Ronald Reagan Everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. Do not fear getting hurt. You can't grow if you don't hurt. Set peace of mind as your highest goal and organize your life around it. Brian Tracy The same conviction which inspires confidence that nothing we have to fear is eternal or even of long duration also enables us to see that in the limited evils of this life, nothing enhances our security so much as friendship. Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. The man who chases two rabbits catches neither. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Aristotle If it keeps you happy, keep it quiet. Failure is a bruise, not a tattoo. Life is filled with suffering, but it is also filled with many wonders. Thich Nhat Hanh. Whatsoever is was made for something, as a horse, a vine. Why wonderest thou? The sun itself will say of itself, I was made for something. And so hath every god its proper function. What then were then made for? To disport and delight thyself? See how even common sense and reason cannot brook it. To realize that you are not your thoughts is when you begin to awaken spiritually. Overthinking ruins you. It ruins the situation twists things around, makes you worry about futile questions, and makes everything much worse than it actually is. The mind is everything, what you think you become, Buddha.
If a woman is angry, it means she is not only wrong, but also she knows it. To lead an orchestra, you must turn your back on the crowd. Anything you really want, you can attain if you really go after it. Wayne Dyer Will this querulousness, this murmuring, this complaining and dissembling never be at an end? What then is it that troubleth thee? Doth any new thing happen unto thee? What doest thou so wonder at, at the cause or the matter? Behold, either by itself is either of that weight and moment indeed. And besides these there is not anything. But thy duty towards the gods also, it is time thou shouldst acquit thyself of it with more goodness and simplicity. No evil propensity of the human heart is so powerful that it may not be subdued by discipline. Early to bed and early to rise in old age makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. Do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. Buddha Don't work after 50 because money won't let you know yourself. Spend time wisely, then you will be extended. He who is brave is free. Success leaves clues. Follow the path of those who have done it before you. Alex Hormozzi That which most men would think themselves most happy for, and would prefer before all things, if the gods would grant it unto them after their deaths, thou mayest, whilst thou livest, grant unto thyself to live again. See the things of the world again, as thou hast already seen them. For what is it else to live again? Public shows and solemnities with much pomp and vanity, stage plays, flocks and herds, conflicts and contentions, a bone thrown to a company of hungry curs, a bait for greedy fishes, the painfulness and continual burden-bearing of wretched ants, the running to and fro of terrified mice, little puppets drawn up and down with wires and nerves, these be the objects of the world, among all these thou must stand steadfast, meekly affected, and free from all manner of indignation. With this right ratiocination and apprehension, that as the worth is of those things which a man doth affect, so is in very deed every man's worth more or less. The ultimate bully is worry. It takes everything and gives nothing. Everyone seems to have a clear idea of how other people should lead their lives, but none about his or her own. He who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche Every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. We suffer not from the events in our lives, but from our judgment about them. Believe that you possess a basic goodness, which is the foundation for the greatness you can ultimately achieve. Les Brown But that he that is once come to forty, if he have any wit at all, can in a manner, for that they are all of one kind, see all things, both past and future. As proper is it, and natural to the soul of man to love her neighbor, to be true and modest, and to regard nothing so much as herself, which is also the property of the law, whereby by the way it appears, that sound reason and justice comes all to one, and therefore that justice is the chief thing, 
that reasonable creatures ought to propose unto themselves as their end. There's nothing you can't achieve if you aren't afraid of dying. Stop putting too much trust in them. Don't let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. Know thyself, ancient Greek aphorism. People are distressed by their inability to do it. The problem, however, is simply that they don't do it. Never put yourself in the bargain bin, or that's where others will... Success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines practiced every day. Jim Rohn Rules for Living The Stoics' basic rules of living emphasize the importance of viewing yourself and the world objectively while living in acceptance with nature. To view the world objectively allows you to see situations free from personal emotions and subjectivity. Another basic rule is to not allow yourself to be controlled by external circumstances, but instead to focus on what you can control while being fully in the present moment. Do not allow yourself to think too far into the future or ruminate too much about the past. Stoic living results in a life of resilience, confidence, and calmness. These three qualities can help in every aspect of life and in any situation. Put into practice the Stoic rules for living, and you will be on your way to a more balanced sense of well-being. Remember the why and purpose of the things you do, and let that direct you to reaching your full potential. Do not depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. Whoever attaches a lot of value to the opinions of others pays them too much honor. There is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power or our will. Epictetus If a man knows not which port he sails, no wind is favorable. One of the most important things you can accomplish is just being yourself. He who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche, Twilight of the Idols. Sift their minds and understandings, and behold what men they be whom thou dost stand in fear of what they shall judge of thee, what they themselves judge of themselves. Give a man a purpose worth living for, and he can survive in any situation. Stop putting too much trust in them. Don't let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. Let us rise up and be thankful, for if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So, let us all be thankful. Buddha People want you to succeed, but not more than themselves. When a person thinks deeply and seriously, he has a bad time among the general public.
The only reason why I became successful was that I went towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. David Goggins Death is nothing to us, for that which has been dissolved into its elements experiences no sensations, and that which has no sensation is nothing to us. People will often take advantage of your kindness if you let them. Dost thou love life? Then do not squander time, for that's the stuff life is made of. You only lose what you cling to. Buddha Your respect at most places is directly proportional to your bank balance. There is no other quality so essential to success of any kind as the quality of perseverance. It overcomes almost everything, even nature. Letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If, in our heart, we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Thich Nhat Hanh. Be not discontented, be not disheartened, be not out of hope. If often it succeed not so well with thee punctually and precisely to do all things according to the right dogmata, but being once cast off, return unto them again. And as for those many and more frequent occurrences, either of worldly distractions or human infirmities, which as a man thou canst not but in some measure be subject unto, be not thou discontented with them, but however, love and affect that only which thou dost return unto, a philosopher's life and proper occupation after the most exact manner. And when thou dost return to thy philosophy, return not unto it as the manner of some is after play and liberty as it were, to their schoolmasters and pedagogues, but as they that have sore eyes to their sponge and egg, or as another to his cataplasm, or as others to their fomentations, so shalt not thou make it a matter of ostentation at all, to obey reason, but of ease and comfort. Remember, no effort that we make to attain something beautiful is ever lost. Give without expecting anything in return. To be content with little is difficult. To be content with much is impossible. Marie von Ebner Eschenbach We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Remain focused, your time is coming. Freedom means you are unobstructed in living your life as you choose. Anything less is a form of slavery. Wayne Dyer A branch cut off from the continuity of that which was next unto it must needs be cut off from the whole tree. So a man that is divided from another man is divided from the whole society. A branch is cut off by another, but he that hates and is averse cuts himself off from his neighbor and knows not that at the same time he divides himself from the whole body or corporation. But herein is the gift and mercy of God, the author of this society, in that once cut off, we may grow together and become part of the whole again. But if this happen often, the misery is that the further a man is run in this division, the harder he is to be reunited and restored again. And however the branch, which once cut of afterwards was graft in, 
gardeners can tell you is not like that which sprouted together at first and still continued in the unity of the body. All cruelty springs from weakness. It's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life story will develop. The worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Aristotle. Obstacles aren't roadblocks, they're road signs. Learn to value experience over possessions because memories are the real treasures of life. Life is a struggle. It is a fight. It is a wrestle. Jocko Willink. It is not thine but another man's sin. Why should it trouble thee? Let him look to it, whose sin it is. If you would know the value of money, go and try to borrow some. What people say when they are angry aren't things they mean. They regret it often. Forgive angry people. It's okay. They are only human. Silence is a true friend who never betrays. Confucius. All progress takes place outside the comfort zone. The person who cares less has the most power in a relationship. Who looks outside, dreams. Who looks inside, awakes. Carl Jung. That we can derive advantage from all external things. In the case of appearances which are objects of the vision, nearly all have allowed the good and the evil to be in ourselves and not in externals. No one gives the name of good to the fact that it is day, nor bad to the fact that it is night, nor the name of the greatest evil to the opinion that three are four. But what do men say? They say that knowledge is good, and that error is bad, so that even in respect of falsehood itself there is a good result, the knowledge that it is falsehood, so it ought to be in life also. Is health a good thing? And is sickness a bad thing? No, man. But what is it? To be healthy and healthy in a right way is good. To be healthy in a bad way is bad, so that it is possible to gain advantage even from sickness, I declare. For is it not possible to gain advantage even from death? And is it not possible to gain advantage from mutilation? Do you think that Menokius gained little by death? Could a man who says so gain so much as Menokius gained? Come, man, did he not maintain the character of being a lover of his country, a man of great mind, faithful, generous? And if he had continued to live, would he not have lost all these things? Would he not have gained the opposite? Would he not have gained the name of coward, ignoble, a hater of his country, a man who feared death? Well, do you think that he gained little by dying? I suppose not. But did the father of Admetus gain much by prolonging his life so ignobly and miserably? Did he not die afterward? Cease, I adjure you by the gods, to admire things. Cease to make yourselves slaves, first of things, then on account of things, slaves of those who are able to give them or take them away. Can advantage then be derived from these things, from all, and from him who abuses you? Wherein does the man who exercises before the combat profit the athlete very greatly? This man becomes my exerciser before the combat. He exercises me in endurance, 
in keeping my temper, in mildness. You say no, but he who lays hold of my neck and disciplines my loins and shoulders does me good, and the exercise master does right when he says, raise him up with both hands, and the heavier he is, so much the more is my advantage. But if a man exercises me in keeping my temper, does he not do good? This is not knowing how to gain an advantage from men. Is my neighbor bad? Bad to himself, but good to me. He exercises my good disposition, my moderation. Is my father bad? Bad to himself, but to me good. This is the rod of Hermes. Touch with it what you please, as the saying is, and it will be of gold. I say not so, but bring what you please and I will make it good. Bring disease, bring death, bring poverty, bring abuse, bring trial on capital charges. All these things through the rod of Hermes shall be made profitable. What will you do with death? Why? What else than that it shall do you honor, or that it shall show you by act through it? What a man is who follows the will of nature? What will you do with disease? I will show its nature. I will be conspicuous in it. I will be firm. I will be happy. I will not flatter the physician. I will not wish to die. What else do you seek? Whatever you shall give me, I will make it happy, fortunate, honored, a thing which a man shall seek. You say no, but take care that you do not fall sick. It is a bad thing. This is the same as if you should say, take care that you never receive the impression that three are four. That is bad. Man, how is it bad? If I think about it as I ought, how shall it then do me any damage? And shall it not even do me good? If then, I think about poverty as I ought to do, about disease, about not having office, is not that enough for me? Will it not be an advantage? How then, ought I any longer to look to seek evil and good in externals? What happens these doctrines are maintained here, but no man carries them away home, but immediately everyone is at war with his slave, with his neighbors, with those who have sneered at him, with those who have ridiculed him. Good luck to Lesbius, who daily proves that I know nothing. Better to make an approximately correct decision than to make a precise mistake. Maybe you are not healing because you're trying to be who you were before. That person doesn't exist anymore because there's a new you trying to be born. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Cicero Things rarely change for the better in your life unless you change them. Overthinking ruins you. It ruins the situation, twists things around, makes you worry about futile questions, and makes everything much worse than it actually is. The path to success is to take massive, determined action. Tony Robbins It is high time for thee to understand that there is somewhat in thee better and more divine than either thy passions or thy sensual appetites and affections. What is now the object of my mind? Is it fear or suspicion or lust or any such thing? to do nothing rashly without some certain end. Let that be thy first care. The next, to have no other end than the common good. For alas, yet a little while, and thou art no more. No more will any, either of those things that now thou seest, or of those men that now are living, be any more. For all things are by nature appointed soon to be changed, turned, and corrupted that other things might succeed in their room. You will be pulled down out of jealousy. Don't get surprised. It's normal.
Today is the oldest you've ever been in your life and the youngest you'll ever be again. When the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. Chinese proverb. Life has a way of working out, even when it seems impossible. If you look at the people in your circle and you don't get inspired, you don't have a circle. You have a cage. The more you stay focused on your blessings, the less stressed your life will be. Jack Canfield As they that long after figs in winter when they cannot be had, so are they that long after children before they be granted them. Nothing is permanent in this wicked world, not even our troubles. When in doubt, just take the next small step. Do not act following customary beliefs. You must understand that there is more than one path to the top of the mountain. Miyamoto Musashi You can fall in love more than once. Worry doesn't take away tomorrow's troubles. It takes away today's peace. Your reputation is your most valuable asset. Protect it at all costs. Alex Hormozzi At thy first encounter with anyone, say presently to thyself, This man, what are his opinions concerning that which is good or evil? As concerning pain, pleasure, and the causes of both, concerning honor and dishonor, concerning life and death, thus and thus. Now if it be no wonder that a man should have such and such opinions, how can it be a wonder that he should do such and such things? I will remember then that he cannot but do as he doth, holding those opinions that he doth. Remember, that as it is a shame for any man to wonder that a fig tree should bear figs, so also to wonder that the world should bear anything, whatsoever it is, which in the ordinary course of nature it may bear. To a physician also and to a pilot it is a shame either for the one to wonder that such and such a one should have an egg, or for the other that the winds should prove contrary, Success is the result of hard work and the ability to apply knowledge. Resilience is knowing that you are the only one that has the power and the responsibility to pick yourself up. Pleasures can become punishments when taken beyond a certain point. Marcus Aurelius Let go and let life strengthen you no matter how much it hurts. You will not be punished for your anger. You will be punished by your anger. If you don't think you're disciplined, it's because you haven't decided to be. Jocko Willink What philosophy promises? When a man was consulting him how he should persuade his brother to cease being angry with him, Epictetus replied, Philosophy does not propose to secure for a man any external thing. If it did, philosophy would be allowing something which is not within its province. For as the carpenter's material is wood, and that of the statuary is copper, so the matter of the art of living is each man's life. What then is my brother's? That again belongs to his own art, 
but with respect to yours it is one of the external things, like a piece of land, like health, like reputation. But philosophy promises none of these. In every circumstance I will maintain, she says, the governing part conformable to nature. Whose governing part? His in whom I am, she says. How then shall my brother cease to be angry with me? Bring him to me and I will tell him. But I have nothing to say to you about his anger. When the man who was consulting him said, I seek to know this how, even if my brother is not reconciled to me, shall I maintain myself in a state conformable to nature? Nothing great, said Epictetus, is produced suddenly, since not even the grape or the fig is. If you say to me now that you want a fig, I will answer to you that it requires time. Let it flower first, then put forth fruit, and then ripen. Is then the fruit of a fig tree not perfected suddenly and in one hour? And would you possess the fruit of a man's mind in so short a time and so easily? Do not expect it, even if I tell you. Have faith in what will be. We are not ill-provided, but use what we have wastefully. To understand everything is to forgive everything. Buddha No matter how hard you work, you can't have everything you want. Eventually, most of us end up settling in some part of our life. Keep your words true, keep your heart kind and keep your actions necessary. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakes, Carl Jung. The just man is most free from disturbance, while the unjust is full of the utmost disturbance. People will enjoy the show. Don't be weak in front of them. Now, where can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul? The mind is everything. What you think you become. Buddha. It is the first responsibility of every citizen to question authority. When you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. Every time you judge someone else, you reveal an unhealed part of yourself. Jay Shetty Even as if any of the gods should tell thee, Thou shalt certainly die tomorrow or next day, thou wouldst not, except thou wert extremely base and pusillanimous. Take it for a great benefit, rather to die the next day after than tomorrow. For alas, what is the difference? So, for the same reason, think it no great matter to die rather many years after than the very next day. Most people are a complete waste of time. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. The one who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace. Bhagavad Gita The 
days are long, the years are short. I heard this after I had my first kid. Couldn't be more true. You will be left with nothing. Start from wherever you are and with whatever you've got. Jim Rohn When someone prides themselves on being able to understand and explain Chrysippus, say to yourself, if Chrysippus had not written obscurely, this person would have nothing on which to pride themselves. But what do I want? To understand nature and to follow her. Therefore I seek someone who can explain this to me, and when I hear that Chrysippus can do so, I go to him. But I do not understand his writings so I seek someone who can explain them to me. Now, up to this point there is nothing to be proud of. When I find someone to explain them, what remains is my putting his principles into practice. This is the only thing to be proud of. But if I am impressed merely by the act of explaining, what else have I accomplished but become a philologist instead of a philosopher? except only that I can explain Chrysippus instead of Homer. No, when someone says to me, explain Chrysippus to me, rather than feel proud, I would blush when I am unable to manifest actions that agree and harmonize with Chrysippus's teaching. If you knew how rarely we are understood correctly, you would be silent more often. If you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things. Knowledge is virtue. Plato. This quote emphasizes the central role of knowledge in achieving moral perfection and a just society. Forget injuries. Never forget kindness. Nothing is particularly hard if you divide it into small jobs. Assume the feeling of being that which you want to be and observe the results. Neville Goddard What a subject and what a course of life is it that thou doest so much desire to be rid of? For all these things, what are they but fit objects for an understanding that beholdeth everything according to its true nature to exercise itself upon? Be patient, therefore, until that, as a strong stomach that turns all things into his own nature, and as a great fire that turneth in flame and light, whatsoever thou doest cast into it, Thou have made these things also familiar, and as it were natural unto thee. There is no disgrace in honest failure. There is disgrace in fearing to fail. Educate your children to self-control, to the habit of holding possession and prejudice and evil tendencies subject to an upright and reasoning will and you will have done much to abolish misery from their future and crimes from society. Happiness does not depend on what you have or who you are. It solely relies on what you think. Buddha Just because a thought got your attention doesn't mean it deserves your attention. When anger rises, think of the consequences. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Les Brown Are you so curious, Socrates, and such a busybody? 
and how does it concern you how we act and what is it that you say being of the same community and of the same kin you neglect yourself and show yourself a bad citizen to the state and a bad kinsman to your kinsmen and a bad neighbor to your neighbors who then are you here it is a great thing to say I am he whose duty it is to take care of men for it is not every little heifer which dares to resist a lion but if the bull comes up and resists him say to the bull if you choose and who are you and what business have you here man in every kind there is produced something which excels in oxen in dogs in bees in horses do not then say to that which excels who then are you if you do it will find a voice in some way and say i am such a thing as the purple in a garment do not expect me to be like the others or blame my nature that it has made me different from the rest of men what then am i such a man certainly not and are you such a man as can listen to the truth i wish you were but however since in a manner i have been condemned to wear a white beard and a cloak and you come to me as to a philosopher i will not treat you in a cruel way nor yet as if i despaired of you but i will say young man whom do you wish to make beautiful in the first place know who you are and then adorn yourself appropriately you are a human being and this is a mortal animal which has the power of using appearances rationally but what is meant by rationally conformably to nature and completely what then do you possess which is peculiar is it the animal part no is it the condition of mortality no is it the power of using appearances no you possess the rational faculty as a peculiar thing adorn and beautify this but leave your hair to him who made it as he chose come what other appellations have you are you man or woman man adorn yourself then as man not as woman woman is naturally smooth and delicate and if she has much hair on her body she is a monster and is exhibited at rome among monsters and in a man it is monstrous not to have hair and if he has no hair he is a monster but if he cuts off his hairs and plucks them out what shall we do with him where shall we exhibit him and under what name shall we show him i will exhibit to you a man who chooses to be a woman rather than a man what a terrible sight there is no man who will not wonder at such a notice indeed i think that the men who pluck out their hairs do what they do without knowing what they do man what fault have you to find with your nature that it made you a man what then was it fit that nature should make all human creatures women and what advantage in that case would you have had in being adorned for whom would you have adorned yourself if all human creatures were women but you are not pleased with the matter set to work then upon the whole business take away what is its name that which is the cause of the hairs make yourself a woman in all respects that we may not be mistaken do not make one half man and the other half woman whom do you wish to please the women please them as a man well but they like smooth men will you not hang yourself and if women took delight in catamites would you become one is this your business were you born for this purpose that dissolute women should delight in you shall we make such a one as you a citizen of corinth and perchance a prefect of the city or chief of the youth or general or superintendent of the games well and when you have taken a wife do you intend to have your hairs plucked out to please whom and for what purpose and when you have begotten children will you introduce them also into the state with the habit of plucking their hairs a beautiful citizen and senator and rhetorician we ought to pray that such young men be born among us and brought up 
Do not so, I entreat you by the gods, young man. But when you have once heard these words, go away and say to yourself, Epictetus has not said this to me, for how could he? But some propitious good through him, for it would never have come into his thoughts to say this, since he is not accustomed to talk thus with any person. Come then, let us obey God, that we may not be subject to his anger. You say no, but if a crow by his croaking signifies anything to you, it is not the crow which signifies, but God through the crow and if he signifies anything through a human voice. Will he not cause the man to say this to you, that you may know the power of the divinity, that he signifies to some in this way and to others in that way, and concerning the greatest things, and the chief he signifies through the noblest messenger? What else is it which the poet says? For we ourselves have warned him and have sent Hermes the careful watcher Argus's slayer, the husband not to kill nor wed the wife. Was Hermes going to descend from heaven to say this to him? And now the gods say this to you and send the messenger, the slayer of Argus, to warn you not to pervert that which is well arranged, nor to busy yourself about it, but to allow a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman, a beautiful man to be as a beautiful man, and an ugly man as an ugly man. For you are not flesh and hair, but you are will. And if your will beautiful, then you will be beautiful. But up the present time, I dare not tell you that you are ugly, for I think that you are readier to hear anything than this. But see what Socrates says to the most beautiful and blooming of men, Alcibiades. Try then to be beautiful. What does he say to him? Dress your hair and pluck the hairs from your legs. Nothing of that kind. But adorn your will. Take away bad opinions. How with the body? Leave it as it is by nature. Another has looked after these things. Entrust them to him. What then? Must a man be uncleaned? Certainly not. But what you are and are made by nature cleanse this. A man should be cleanly as a man. A woman as a woman, a child as a child. You say no, but let us also pluck out the lion's mane, that he may not be uncleaned, and the cock's comb, for he also ought to he cleaned. Granted, but as a cock, and the lion as a lion, and the hunting dog as a hunting dog. Get yourself together before you get any older. The older you are, the harder it is to change. Everything outside of this moment is just imagination. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. Albert Einstein When true virtue is lost, good nature appears. When good nature is lost, justice appears. When justice is lost, decency appears. The rules of decency are only the semblance of truth and the beginning of all disorder. Listen more than you speak, for wisdom often comes from silence. The mind creates the illusion of separation. The self is one and indivisible. Nisargadatta Maharaj When children come clapping their hands and crying out, Today is the good Saturnalia, do we say, The Saturnalia are not good, by no means, but we clap our hands also. Do you also then, when you are not able to make a man change his mind, be assured that he is a child, and clap your hands with him, and if you do not choose to do this, keep silent. A man must keep this in mind. And when he is called to any such difficulty, he should know that the time is come for showing if he has been instructed. For he who is come into a difficulty is like a young man from a school who has practiced the resolution of syllogisms. 
and if any person proposes to him an easy syllogism, he says, Rather propose to me a syllogism which is skillfully complicated that I may exercise myself on it. Even athletes are dissatisfied with slight young men and say, He cannot lift me. This is a youth of noble disposition. But when the time of trial has come, one of you must weep and say, I wish that I had learned more. A little more of what? If you did not learn these things in order to show them in practice, why did you learn them? I think that there is someone among you who are sitting here, who is suffering like a woman in labor and saying, Oh, that such a difficulty does not present itself to me as that which has come to this man. Oh, that I should be wasting my life in a corner when I might be crowned at Olympia. When will anyone announce to me such a contest? Such ought to be the disposition of all of you. Even among the gladiators of Caesar, there are some who complain grievously that they are not brought forward and matched, and they offer up prayers to God and address themselves to their superintendents entreating that they might fight. And will no one among you show himself such? I would willingly take a voyage for this purpose and see what my athlete is doing, how he is studying his subject. I do not choose such a subject, he says. Why, is it in your power to take what subject you choose? There has been given to you such a body as you have, such parents, such brethren, such a country, such a place in your country. Then you come to me and say, change my subject. Have you not abilities which enable you to manage the subject which has been given to you? It is your business to propose. It is mine to exercise myself well. However, you do not say so, but you say, Do not propose to me such a tropic, but such. Do not urge against me such an objection, but such. There will be a time, perhaps, when tragic actors will suppose that they are masks and buskins and the long cloak. I say these things, man, are your material and subject. Utter something that we may know whether you are a tragic actor or a buffoon, for both of you have all the rest in common. If anyone then should take away the tragic actor's buskins and his mask, and introduce him on the stage as a phantom, is the tragic actor lost, or does he still remain? If he has voice, he still remains. An example of another kind. Assume the governorship of a province. I assume it, and when I have assumed it, I show how an instructed man behaves. Lay aside the laticlave, and clothing yourself in rags, come forward in this character. What then have I not the power of displaying a good voice? How then do you now appear, as a witness summoned by God? Come forward, you, and bear testimony for me, for you are worthy to be brought forward as a witness by me. Is anything external to the will good or bad? Do I hurt any man? Have I made every man's interest dependent on any man except himself? What testimony do you give for God? I am in a wretched condition, Master, and I am unfortunate. No man cares for me. No man gives me anything. All blame me. All speak ill of me. Is this the evidence that you are going to give and disgrace his summons who has conferred so much honor on you and thought you worthy of being called to bear such testimony? But suppose that he who has the power has declared, I judge you to be impious and profane. What has happened to you? I have been judged to be impious and profane. Nothing else, nothing else. But if the same person had passed judgment on an hypothetical syllogism and had made a declaration, the conclusion that if it is day, it is light, I declare to be false. What has happened to the hypothetical syllogism? Who is judged in this case? Who has been condemned? The hypothetical syllogism, or the man who has been deceived by it, does he then, 
who has the power of making any declaration about you know what is pious or impious? Has he studied it and has he learned it? Where? From whom? Then is it the fact that a musician pays no regard to him who declares that the lowest chord in the lyre is the highest, nor yet a geometrician, if he declares that the lines from the center of a circle to the circumference are not equal? And shall he who is really instructed pay any regard to the uninstructed man when he pronounces judgment on what is pious and what is impious, on what is just and unjust? Oh, the signal wrong done by the instructed! Did they learn this here? Will you not leave the small arguments about these matters to others, to lazy fellows, that they may sit in a corner and receive their sorry pay, or grumble that no one gives them anything? And will you not come forward and make use of what you have learned? For it is not these small arguments that are wanted now. The writings of the Stoics are full of them. What then is the thing which is wanted? A man who shall apply them, one who by his acts shall bear testimony to his words. Assume, I entreat you, this character, that we may no longer use in the schools the examples of the ancients, but may have some example of our own. To whom then does the contemplation of these matters belong? To him who has leisure, for man is an animal that loves contemplation. But it is shameful to contemplate these things as runaway slaves do. We should sit, as in a theater, free from distraction, and listen at one time to the tragic actor, at another time to the lute player, and not do as slaves do. As soon as the slave has taken his station, he praises the actor and at the same time looks round. Then, if anyone calls out his master's name, the slave is immediately frightened and disturbed. It is shameful for philosophers thus to contemplate the works of nature. For what is a master? Man is not the master of man, but death is, and life and pleasure and pain. For if he comes without these things, bring Caesar to me and you will see how firm I am. But when he shall come with these things, thundering and lightning, and when I am afraid of them, what do I do then except to recognize my master like the runaway slave? But so long as I have any respite from these terrors as a runaway slave stands in the theater, so do I. I bathe, I drink, I sing. But all this I do with terror and uneasiness. But if I shall release myself from my masters, that is from those things by means of which masters are formidable, what further trouble have I? What master have I still? What then? Ought we to publish these things to all men? No, but we ought to accommodate ourselves to the ignorant and to say, This man recommends to me that which he thinks good for himself. I excuse him. For Socrates also excused the jailer, who had the charge of him in prison and was weeping when Socrates was going to drink the poison, and said, How generously he laments over us! Does he then say to the jailer that for this reason we have sent away the women? No, but he says it to his friends who were able to hear it, and he treats the jailer as a child. Do not indulge in dreams of having what you have not, but reckon up the chief of the blessings you do possess and then thankfully remember how you would crave for them if they were not yours. If each of us sweeps right under our feet, the whole world will be clean. Cowards die many times before their death. Julius Caesar There is no greater waste of time than justifying your actions to people who have a life you don't want. To have what you never had, you have to do what you never did. When you really want something, and you couple that with an understanding of why it is possible, 
and your willingness to do whatever it takes to make it happen, you will succeed. Jack Canfield O oh, wretched I to whom this mischance has happened! Nay, happy I to whom this thing being happened I can continue without grief, neither wounded by that which is present, nor in fear of that which is to come. For as for this, it might have happened unto any man, but any man having such a thing befallen him could not have continued without grief. Why then should that rather be an unhappiness than this a happiness? But however, Canst thou, O man, term that unhappiness which is no mischance to the nature of man? I canst thou think that a mischance to the nature of man which is not contrary to the end and will of his nature? What then hast thou learned is the will of man's nature? Doth that then which hath happened unto thee hinder thee from being just, or magnanimous, or temperate, or wise, or circumspect, or true, or modest, or free? or from anything else of all those things in the present enjoying in possession, whereof the nature of man, as then enjoying all that is proper unto her, is fully satisfied. Now to conclude, upon all occasion of sorrow remember henceforth to make use of this dogma, that whatsoever it is that hath happened unto thee is in very deed no such thing of itself as a misfortune, but that to bear it generously is certainly great happiness. Adversity is like a strong wind. It tears away from us all but the things that cannot be torn, so that we see ourselves as we really are. If you wouldn't take advice from them, why would you take criticism? I walk slowly, but I never walk backward. Abraham Lincoln Life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. Make more moves and less announcements. You can't fix someone who doesn't want to be fixed, but you can help them want to be. Jay Shetty Whatsoever dieth and falleth, however, and wheresoever it die and fall, it cannot fall out of the world. Here it have its abode and change. Here also shall it have its dissolution into its proper elements. The same are the world's elements, and the elements of which thou dost consist. And they, when they are changed, they murmur not. Why shouldest thou? We must never stop dreaming. Dreams provide nourishment for the soul, just as a meal does for the body. Live immediately. Homo homini lupus. Man is a wolf to man. Plautus. Carefully consider the negative signs that people give off and immediately disconnect from them. It will save you a lot of pain and, more importantly, wasted time. Mistakes are proof that you're trying. Imagine no limitations. Decide what's right and desirable before you decide what's possible. Brian Tracy In general, justice is the same for all, for it is something found mutually beneficial in men's dealings, but in its application to particular places or other circumstances, the same thing is not necessarily just for everyone. Lower your expectations. Having high expectations of yourself and of others is a recipe for chronic dissatisfaction in life.
Do not cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it. He has the most who is content with the least, Diogenes. Let go or be dragged. Perfectionism is a disease. Procrastination is a disease. Action is the cure. There's no shortcut. There's no hack. There's only one way. So get after it. Jocko Willink. Why should any of these things that happen externally so much distract thee, give thyself leisure to learn some good thing, and cease roving and wandering to and fro. Thou must also take heed of another kind of wandering, for they are idle in their actions, who toil and labor in this life, and have no certain scope to which to direct all their motions and desires. You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. Hard times will always reveal true friends. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. Abraham Lincoln The way of truth is like a great road. It is not difficult to know it. The evil is only that men will not seek it. You can always rise above those who offend you by forgiving them. I'm inviting you to go deeper, to learn and to practice, so that you become someone who has a great capacity for being solid, calm, and without fear, because our society needs people like you who have these qualities, and your children, our children, need people like you in order to go on, in order to become solid and calm and without fear. Tichnat Han. How clearly doth it appear unto thee that no other course of thy life could fit a true philosopher's practice better than this very course that thou art now already in. Courage is found in unlikely places. Thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle and its life will not get any shorter. Happiness doesn't diminish when you share it. All that exists is the seed of what will emerge from it. Marcus Aurelius Never say maybe. If you want to say no, say no. So, the unwilling soul sees what's hidden, and the ever-wanting soul sees only what it wants. Develop the winning edge. Small differences in your performance can lead to large differences in your results. Brian Tracy From man is the seed that once cast into the womb, man hath no more to do with it. Another cause succeedeth and undertakes the work, and in time brings a child, that wonderful effect from such a beginning, to perfection. Again, man lets food down through his throat, and that once down, he hath no more to do with it. Another cause succeedeth and distributeth this food into the senses and the affections, into life and into strength, and doth with it those other many and marvelous things that belong unto man. These things, therefore, that are so secretly and invisibly wrought and brought to pass, thou must use to behold and contemplate, 
and not the things themselves only, but the power also by which they are affected, that thou mayest behold it, though not with the eyes of the body, yet as plainly and visibly as thou canst see and discern the outward efficient cause of the depression and elevation of anything. A house is not a home unless it contains food and fire for the mind as well as the body. A person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. Freedom is not procured by a full enjoyment of what is desired, but by controlling the desire. Epictetus It is better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for something you are not. Allow yourself to be a beginner. No one starts off being excellent. When you transcend the mind, you experience the self. Nisargadatta Maharaj Hast thou reason? I have. Why then makest thou not use of it? For if thy reason do her part, what more canst thou require? It's a slow process, but quitting won't speed it up. There is no point in being grown up if you can't act a little childish. People do not decide their futures. They decide their habits, and their habits decide their futures. Frederick M. Alexander Many people don't like you, especially if they see you as a competition. If you think adventure is dangerous, try routine. It is lethal. You are always creating, and the world is the reflection of your creations. Neville Goddard There is but one light of the sun, though it be intercepted by walls and mountains, and other thousand objects. There is but one common substance of the whole world, though it be concluded and restrained into several different bodies, in number infinite. There is but one common soul, though divided into innumerable particular essences and natures. So is there but one common intellectual soul, though it seem to be divided. And as for all other parts of those generals which we have mentioned as either sensitive souls or subjects, these of themselves, as naturally irrational, have no common mutual reference one unto another, though many of them contain a mind or reasonable faculty in them, whereby they are ruled and governed. But of every reasonable mind, this the particular nature, that it hath reference to whatsoever is of her own kind, and desireth to be united, neither can this common affection or mutual unity and correspondency be here intercepted or divided, or confined to particulars as those other common things are. For it is better to be alone than in bad company. The first man gets the oyster, the second man gets the shell. The time is always right to do what is right. Martin Luther King, Jr. Do not shake the green apple tree. When the apple is ripe, it will fall down by itself. Embrace the storm of your life. Combat is brutal and unforgiving. Jocko Willink. Remember that the insult does not come from the person who abuses you or hits you, 
but from your judgment that such people are insulting you. Therefore, whenever someone provokes you, be aware that it is your own opinion that provokes you. Try, therefore, in the first place, not to be carried away by your impressions, for if you can gain time and delay, you will more easily control yourself. Never let anyone make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Buddha Do what you can with what you have, where you are. Ignore red flags because you want to see the good in people will cost you later. Most of us would be upset if we were accused of being silly. But the world is in a serious condition largely because of our failure to laugh at the right things. Zig Ziglar That we do not strive to use our opinions about good and evil. Where is the good? In the will. Where is the evil? In the will. Where is neither of them? In those things which are independent of the will. Well then, does anyone among us think of these lessons out of the schools? Does anyone meditate by himself to give an answer to things as in the case of questions? Is it day? Yes. Is it night? No. Well, is the number of stars even? I cannot say. When money is shown to you, have you studied to make the proper answer that money is not a good thing? Have you practiced yourself in these answers or only against sophisms? Why do you wonder then if in the cases which you have studied, in those you have improved, but in those which you have not studied, in those you remain the same? When the rhetorician knows that he has written well, that he has committed to memory what he has written, and brings an agreeable voice. Why is he still anxious? Because he is not satisfied with having studied. What then does he want? To be praised by the audience? For the purpose then of being able to practice declamation, he has been disciplined, but with respect to praise and blame he has not been disciplined. For when did he hear from anyone what praise is, what blame is, what the nature of each is, what kind of praise should be sought, or what kind of blame should be shunned? And when did he practice this discipline which follows these words? Why then do you still wonder if, in the matters which a man has learned, there he surpasses others, and in those in which he has not been disciplined, there he is the same with the many? So the lute player knows how to play, sings well, and has a fine dress, and yet he trembles when he enters on the stage. For these matters he understands, but he does not know what a crowd is, nor the shouts of a crowd, nor what ridicule is. Neither does he know what anxiety is, whether it is our work or the work of another, whether it is possible to stop it or not. For this reason, if he has been praised, he leaves the theater puffed up. But if he has been ridiculed, the swollen bladder has been punctured and subsides. This is the case also with ourselves. What do we admire? Externals. About what things are we busy? Externals. And have we any doubt then why we fear or why we are anxious? What then happens when we think the things which are coming on us to be evils? It is not in our power not to be afraid. It is not in our power not to be anxious. Then we say, Lord God, how shall I not be anxious? Fool, have you not hands? Did not God make them for you? Sit down now and pray that your nose may not run. Wipe yourself rather and do not blame him. Well then, 
Has he given to you nothing in the present case? Has he not given to you endurance? Has he not given to you magnanimity? Has he not given to you manliness? When you have such hands, do you look for one who shall wipe your usaint nose? But we neither study these things nor care for them. Give me a man who cares how he shall do anything, not for the obtaining of a thing, but who cares about his own energy. What man, when he is walking about, cares for his own energy? Who, when he is deliberating, cares about his own deliberation, and not about obtaining that about which he deliberates? And if he succeeds, he is elated and says, How well we have deliberated! Did I not tell you, brother, that it is impossible when we have thought about anything that it should not turn out thus? But if the thing should turn out otherwise, the wretched man is humbled. He knows not even what to say about what has taken place. Who among us for the sake of this matter has consulted a seer? Who among us as to his actions has not slept in indifference? Who? Give to me one that I may see the man whom I have long been looking for, who is truly noble and ingenuous, whether young or old. Name him. Why then are we still surprised if we are well practiced in thinking about matters, but in our acts are low, without decency, worthless, cowardly, impatient of labor, altogether bad? For we do not care about things, nor do we study them. But if we had feared not death or banishment, but fear itself, we should have studied not to fall into those things which appear to us evils. Now in the school we are irritable and wordy, and if any little question arises about any of these things, we are able to examine them fully. But drag us to practice, and you will find us miserably shipwrecked. Let some disturbing appearance come on us, and you will know what we have been studying and in what we have been exercising ourselves. Consequently, through want of discipline, we are always adding something to the appearance and representing things to be greater than what they are. For instance, as to myself, when I am on a voyage and look down on the deep sea, or look round on it and see no land, I am out of my mind and imagine that I must drink up all this water, if I am wrecked. And it does not occur to me that three pints are enough. Trusting blindly often leads to betrayal. You don't need to be right all the time. You learn nothing from life if you think you're right all the time. You only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. May West Your deepest, darkest moment may be the best thing that ever happens to you. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Until there is peace between religions, there can be no peace in the world. Thich Nhat Hanh. Continuous bodily pain does not last long. Instead, pain, if extreme, is present a very short time and even that degree of pain which slightly exceeds bodily pleasure does not last for many days at once. Diseases of long duration allow an excess of bodily pleasure over pain. You will be left with nothing. Failure is not always a mistake. It may simply be the best one can do under the circumstances. The real mistake is to stop trying. From this instant on, vow to stop disappointing yourself. Separate yourself from the mob. Decide to be extraordinary and do what you need to do now. Epictetus Think before you act. 
It can take a second to do something you haven't properly considered. That isn't a true reflection of your character, and it can undo a lifetime of kindness and generosity. To live is to suffer. To survive is to find some meaning in the suffering. The heart is the secret of the divine universe. Rumi And as for thy body, what canst thou fear, if thou dost consider that thy mind and understanding, when once it hath recollected itself, and knows its own power, hath in this life and breath, whether it runs smoothly and gently, or whether harshly and rudely, no interest at all, but is altogether indifferent, and whatsoever else thou hast heard and assented unto concerning either pain or pleasure, but the care of thine honor and reputation will perchance distract thee. How can that be if thou dost look back, and consider both how quickly all things that are are forgotten, and what an immense chaos of eternity was before, and will follow after all things, and the vanity of praise, and the inconstancy and variableness of human judgments and opinions, and the narrowness of the place, wherein it is limited and circumscribed. For the whole earth is but as one point, and of it, this inhabited part of it, is but a very little part. And of this part, how many in number, and what manner of men are they, that will commend thee? What remains then, but that thou often put in practice this kind of retiring of thyself, to this little part of thyself, and above all things, keep thyself from distraction, and intend not anything vehemently, but be free and consider all things, as a man whose proper object is virtue, as a man whose true nature is to be kind and sociable, as a citizen, as a mortal creature. Among other things, which to consider and look into thou must use to withdraw thyself, let those two be among the most obvious and at hand. One, that the things or objects themselves reach not unto the soul but stand without still and quiet, and that it is from the opinion only which is within that all the tumult and all the trouble doth proceed. The next, that all these things which now thou seest, shall within a very little while be changed and be no more, and ever call to mind how many changes and alterations in the world thou thyself hast already been an eyewitness of in thy time. This world is mere change, and this life, opinion. It is not a mistake anymore, it is a decision. People don't resist change, they resist being changed. What we do now echoes in eternity. Marcus Aurelius Having been poor is no shame, but being ashamed of it is. Genius is a mind that knows its limits. If you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you want and copy what they do. Alex Hormozzi What fear is there that thy dogmata or philosophical resolutions and conclusions should become dead in thee and lose their proper power and efficacy to make thee live happy? as long as those proper and correlative fancies and representations of things on which they mutually depend, which continually to stir up and revive is in thy power, are still kept fresh and alive? It is in my power concerning this thing that has happened, whatsoever it be, to conceit that which is right and true. If it be, why then am I troubled? Those things that are without my understanding, are nothing to it at all, and that is it only, which doth properly concern me. Be always in this mind, and thou wilt be right. 
It has been my observation that most people get ahead during the time that others waste. It is a reflection of your lack of willpower, discipline, and your piss-poor life choices. You meet every single person for a reason. Just let it be. The fool's life is empty of gratitude and full of fears. Its course lies wholly toward the future. Epicurus It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Close some doors, not because of pride, incapacity or arrogance, but simply because they no longer lead somewhere. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. You do not have to be concerned about your journey. You have already arrived. Eckhart Tolle To those who fear want, are you not ashamed at more cowardly and more mean than fugitive slaves? How do they, when they run away, leave their masters? On what estates do they depend and what domestics do they rely on? Do they not, after stealing a little which is enough for the first days, then afterward move on through land or through sea, contriving one method after another for maintaining their lives? And what fugitive slave ever died of hunger? But you are afraid lest necessary things should fall you and are sleepless by night. Wretch, are you so blind? And don't you see the road to which the want of necessaries leads? Well. Where does it lead? To the same place to which a fever leads, or a stone that falls on you, to death. Have you not often said this yourself to your companions? Have you not read much of this kind, and written much? And how often have you boasted that you were easy as to death? Yes, but my wife and children also suffer hunger. Well then, does their hunger lead to any other place? Is there not the same descent to some place for them also? Is not there the same state below for them? Do you not choose, then, to look to that place full of boldness against every want and deficiency? To that place to which both the richest and those who have held the highest offices and kings themselves and tyrants must descend? Or to which you will descend hungry if it should so happen, but they burst by indigestion and drunkenness. What beggar did you hardly ever see who was not an old man, and even of extreme old age, but chilled with cold day and night, and lying on the ground and eating only what is absolutely necessary, they approach near to the impossibility of dying. Cannot you write? Cannot you teach children? Cannot you be a watchman at another person's door? But it is shameful to come to such necessity. Learn then first what are the things which are shameful, and then tell us that you are a philosopher. But at present do not, even if any other man call you so. Allow it. Is that shameful to you which is not your own act, that of which you are not the cause, that which has come to you by accident, as a headache, as a fever? If your parents were poor and left their property to others, and if while they live, they do not help you at all, is this shameful to you? Is this what you learned with the philosophers? Did you never hear that the thing which is shameful ought to be blamed, and that which is blamable is worthy of blame? Whom do you blame for an act which is not his own, which he did not do himself? Did you then make your father such as he is? Or is it in your power to improve him? Is this power given to you? Well then, ought you to wish the things which are not given to you, or to be ashamed if you do not obtain them? And have you also been accustomed while you were studying philosophy 
to look to others and to hope for nothing from yourself? Lament then and groan and eat with fear that you may not have food tomorrow. Tremble about your poor slaves lest they steal, lest they run away, lest they die. So live and continue to live, you who in name only have approached philosophy and have disgraced its theorems as far as you can by showing them to be useless and unprofitable to those who take them up. You who have never sought constancy, freedom from perturbation and from passions. You who have not sought any person for the sake of this object, but many for the sake of syllogisms. You who have never thoroughly examined any of these appearances by yourself. Am I able to bear, or am I not able to bear? What remains for me to do? But as if all your affairs were well and secure, you have been resting on the third topic, that of things being unchanged, in order that you may possess unchanged. What? Cowardice means spirit, the admiration of the rich, desire without attaining any end, and avoidance which fails in the attempt. About security in these things you have been anxious. Ought you not to have gained something in addition from reason and then to have protected this with security? And whom did you ever see building a battlement all round and not encircling it with a wall? And what doorkeeper is placed with no door to watch? But you practice in order to be able to prove. What? You practice that you may not be tossed as on the sea through sophisms and tossed about from what? One of the fastest ways to improve your life is to simply do what you said you were going to do. When fate hands you lemons, make lemonade. Happiness is not something ready-made. It comes from your own actions. Dalai Lama Seek respect, not attention. It lasts longer. Recognizing that you are not where you want to be is a starting point to begin changing your life. You get paid in direct proportion to the difficulty of problems you solve. Alex Hormozzi In my sickness, saith Epicurus of himself, my discourses were not concerning the nature of my disease, neither was that to them that came to visit me the subject of my talk, but in the consideration and contemplation of that, which was of a special weight and moment, was all my time bestowed and spent, and among others in this very thing, how my mind, by a natural and unavoidable sympathy, partaking in some sort with the present indisposition of my body, might nevertheless keep herself free from trouble and in present possession of her own proper happiness. Neither did I leave the ordering of my body to the physicians altogether to do with me what they would, as though I expected any great matter from them, or as though I thought it a matter of such great consequence by their means to recover my health. For my present estate, methought, liked me very well, and gave me good content. Whether therefore in sickness, if thou chance to sicken, or in what other kind of extremity soever, endeavor thou also to be in thy mind so affected, as he doth report of himself, not to depart from thy philosophy for anything that can befall thee, nor to give ear to the discourses of silly people and mere naturalists. Betrayal never comes from your enemies. Only time can heal what reason cannot. Men would live exceedingly quiet if these two words, mine and thine, were taken away. Anaxagoras
If you miss the moment, it can never be returned. In the hopes of reaching the moon, men failed to see the flowers that blossom at their feet. It's not what we do once in a while that shapes our lives. It's what we do consistently. Tony Robbins From Alexander the Grammarian To be unreprovable myself And not reproachfully to reprehend any man for a barbarism or a solecism or any false pronunciation But dexterously by way of answer or testimony or confirmation of the same matter, taking no notice of the word, to utter it as it should have been spoken, or by some other such close and indirect admonition, handsomely and civilly to tell him of it. Of this one thing, make sure against your dying day that your faults die before you do. Man's manners are a mirror in which his portrait is reflected. Remind yourself that your precious one isn't one of your possessions, but something given for now, not forever. Epictetus He who angers you conquers you. Mostly people will treat you according to their needs and greed. You have to fight against weakness every day, Jocko Willing. The best kind of revenge is not to become like unto them. A river cuts through rock not because of its power, but because of its persistence. Everything happens for a reason. The gem cannot be polished without friction, nor man perfected without trials. Chinese proverb. It's a slow process, but quitting won't speed it up. Choose a job you love, and you will never have to work a day in your life. Success is the result of good habits compounded over time. Alex Hormozzi that we ought to proceed with circumspection to everything. In every act consider what precedes and what follows, and then proceed to the act. If you do not consider, you will at first begin with spirit, since you have not thought at all of the things which follow. But afterward, when some consequences have shown themselves, you will basely desist. I wish to conquer at the Olympic Games. And I too, by the gods, for it is a fine thing. But consider here what precedes and what follows, and then, if it is for your good, undertake the thing. You must act according to rules, follow strict diet, abstain from delicacies, exercise yourself by compulsion at fixed times, in heat, in cold, drink no cold water, nor wine, when there is opportunity of drinking it. In a word, you must surrender yourself to the trainer as you do to a physician. Next in the contest, you must be covered with sand, sometimes dislocate a hand, sprain an ankle, swallow a quantity of dust, be scourged with the whip. And after undergoing all this, you must sometimes be conquered. After reckoning all these things, if you have still an inclination, go to the athletic practice. If you do not reckon them, observe you behave like children, who at one time you will play as wrestlers, then as gladiators, then blow a trumpet, then act a tragedy when they have seen and admired such things. So you also do. You are at one time a wrestler, 
then a gladiator, then a philosopher, then a rhetorician. But with your whole soul, you are nothing. Like the ape, you imitate all that you see. And always one thing after another pleases you, but that which becomes familiar displeases you. For you have never undertaken anything after consideration, nor after having explored the whole matter and put it to a strict examination, but you have undertaken it at hazard and with a cold desire. Thus some persons, having seen a philosopher and having heard one speak like Euphrates yet who can speak like him, wish to be philosophers themselves. Man, consider first what the matter is, then your own nature also, what it is able to bear. If you are a wrestler, look at your shoulders, your thighs, your loins, for different men are naturally formed for different things. Do you think that, if you do, you can be a philosopher? Do you think that you can eat as you do now, drink as you do now, and in the same way be angry and out of humor? You must watch, labor, conquer certain desires. You must depart from your kinsmen, be despised by your slave, laughed at by those who meet you. In everything you must be in an inferior condition, as to magisterial office in honors and courts of justice. When you have considered all these things completely, then, if you think proper, approach to philosophy. If you would gain an exchange for these things, freedom from perturbations, liberty, tranquility. If you have not considered these things, do not approach philosophy. Do not act like children. At one time a philosopher, then a tax collector, then a rhetorician, then a procurator of Caesar. These things are not consistent. You must be one man, either good or bad. You must either labor at your own ruling faculty or at external things. You must either labor at things within or at external things. That is, you must either occupy the place of a philosopher or that of one of the vulgar. A person said to Rufus when Galba was murdered, Is the world now governed by providence? But Rufus replied, Did I ever incidentally form an argument from Galba that the world is governed by providence? Be obsessed with becoming the best version of yourself. All cruelty springs from weakness. Contentment is natural wealth. Luxury is artificial poverty. Socrates Your days are numbered. Use them to throw open the windows of your soul to the sun. If you do not, the sun will soon set, and you with it. Prioritizing yourself is not selfish. Success is doing what you want to do, when you want, where you want, with whom you want, as much as you want. Tony Robbins On Constancy The being of the good is a certain will. The being of the bad is a certain kind of will. What then are externals? Materials for the will about which the will being conversant shall obtain its own good or evil. How shall it obtain the good? If it does not admire the materials, for the opinions about the materials, if the opinions are right, make the will good, but perverse and distorted opinions make the will bad. God has fixed this law and says, if you would have anything good, receive it from yourself. You say, no, but I have it from another. Do not so, but receive it from yourself. Therefore, when the tyrant threatens and calls me, I say, whom do you threaten? If he says, I will put you in chains, I say, you threaten my hands and my feet. If he says, I will cut off your head, I reply, you threaten my head. If he says, I will throw you into prison, I say, you threaten the whole of this poor body. 
If he threatens me with banishment, I say the same. Does he then not threaten you at all? If I feel that all these things do not concern me, he does not threaten me at all. But if I fear any of them, it is I whom he threatens. Whom then do I fear? The master of what? The master of things which are in my own power? There is no such master. Do I fear the master of things which are not in my power? And what are these things to me? Do you philosophers then teach us to despise kings? I hope not. Who among us teaches to claim against them the power over things which they possess? Take my poor body, take my property, take my reputation, take those who are about me. If I advise any persons to claim these things, they may truly accuse me. Yes, but I intend to command your opinions also. And who has given you this power? How can you conquer the opinion of another man? By applying terror to it, he replies, I will conquer it. Do you not know that opinion conquers itself? and is not conquered by another? But nothing else can conquer will except the will itself. For this reason, too, the law of God is most powerful and most just, which is this. Let the stronger always be superior to the weaker. Ten are stronger than one. For what? For putting in chains, for killing, for dragging whither they choose, for taking away what a man has. The ten therefore conquer the one in this, in which they are stronger. In what then are the ten weaker, if the one possess right opinions and the others do not? Well then, can the ten conquer in this matter? How is it possible? If we were placed in the scales, must not the heavier draw down the scale in which it is? How strange then, that Socrates should have been so treated by the Athenians, Slave, why do you say, Socrates? Speak of the thing as it is. How strange that the poor body of Socrates should have been carried off and dragged to prison by stronger men, and that any one should have given hemlock to the poor body of Socrates, and that it should breathe out the life. Do these things seem strange? Do they seem unjust? Do you, on account of these things, blame God? Had Socrates then no equivalent for these things? Where then for him was the nature of good? Whom shall we listen to, you or him? And what does Socrates say? Anitus and Melitus can kill me, but they cannot hurt me. And further he says, If it so pleases God, so let it be. But show me that he who has the inferior principles overpowers him who is superior in principles. You will never show this, nor come near showing it. For this is the law of nature and of God, that the superior shall always overpower the inferior. In what? In that in which it is superior. One body is stronger than another. Many are stronger than one. The thief is stronger than he who is not a thief. This is the reason why I also lost my lamp. Because in wakefulness the thief was superior to me. But the man bought the lamp at this price. For a lamp he became a thief, a faithless fellow, and like a wild beast. This seemed to him a good bargain. Be it so. But a man has seized me by the cloak, and is drawing me to the public place. Then others bawl out, Philosopher, what has been the use of your opinions? See you are dragged to prison. You are going to be beheaded. And what system of philosophy could F have made so that, if a stronger man should have laid hold of my cloak, I should not be dragged off? That if ten men should have laid hold of me and cast me into prison, I should not be cast in? Have I learned nothing else then? I have learned to see that everything which happens, if it be independent of my will, is nothing to me. I may ask if you have not gained by this. Why then do you seek advantage in anything else than in that in which you have learned that advantage is? Then sitting in prison I say, The man who cries out in this way neither hears what words mean nor understands what is said, 
nor does he care at all to know what philosophers say or what they do. Let him alone. But now, he says to the prisoner, come out from your prison. If you have no further need of me in prison, I come out. If you should have need of me again, I will enter the prison. How long will you act thus? So long as reason requires me to be with the body. But when reason does not require this, take away the body and fare you well. Only we must not do it inconsiderately, nor weakly, nor for any slight reason. For on the other hand, God does not wish it to be done, and he has need of such a world and such inhabitants in it. But if he sounds the signal for retreat, as he did to Socrates, we must obey him who gives the signal, as if he were a general. Well then, ought we to say such things to the many? Why should we? Is it not enough for a man to be persuaded himself? If you lack faith, then existence does not believe in you. The only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. Our anxiety does not come from thinking about the future, but from wanting to control it. Khalil Gibran Better to be alone than in bad company. People in ancient times did not like to talk much. They considered it a shame for themselves not to keep up with their own words. For things to reveal themselves to us, we need to be ready to abandon our views about them. Tishnat Hun. Will either passengers or patients find fault and complain, either the one if they be well carried, or the others if well cured? Do they take care for any more than this? The one that their shipmaster may bring them safe to land, and the other, that their physician may effect their recovery. You become what you think about. People want you to succeed, but not more than themselves. Those who do not move do not notice their chains. Rosa Luxemburg Never argue with stupid people. They will drag you down to their level and then beat you with experience. Never lose your sense of humor. Laughter is the best medicine for the soul. The greatest gift that you can give to others is the gift of unconditional love and acceptance. Brian Tracy Whatsoever doth happen in the world doth happen justly, and so if thou dost well take heed, thou shalt find it. I say not only in right order by a series of inevitable consequences, but according to justice, and as it were by way of equal distribution, according to the true worth of everything. Continue then to take notice of it, as thou hast begun, and whatsoever thou dost, do it not without this proviso, that it be a thing of that nature that a good man, as the word good is properly taken, may do it. This observe carefully in every action. The more you like yourself, the less you'll need others. To realize that you are not your thoughts is when you begin to awaken spiritually. Nature does nothing uselessly. Aristotle Just because your path is different from others doesn't mean you're lost.
No single thing will solve all your problems. No goal, no achievement, no relationship. No one will ever fix you. The only limits to the possibilities in your life tomorrow are the butts you use today. Les Brown Let death surprise me when it will, and where it will I may be a Mirus, or a happy man nevertheless. For he is a happy man who in his lifetime dealeth unto himself a happy lot and portion. A happy lot and portion is good inclinations of the soul, good desires, good actions. Men cheat because they don't feel needed. Women because they don't feel loved. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. If you're going through hell, keep going. Winston Churchill Keep your mouth shut whenever you are happy. Keep your mouth shut whenever you are sad. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. Let the beauty we love be what we do, Rumi. All worldly things thou must behold and consider, dividing them into matter, form, and reference, or their proper end. Progress is impossible without change. Do not postpone joy for the sake of the future. The morrow is promised to no one. All cruelty springs from weakness. Seneca A high degree of intellect tends to make a man unsocial. A creation of importance can only be produced when its author isolates himself. It is a child of solitude. Learn how to be happy with what you have while you pursue all that you want. Jim Rohn We all work to one effect, some willingly and with a rational apprehension of what we do, others without any such knowledge. As I think Heraclitus in a place speaketh of them that sleep, that even they do work in their kind, and do confer to the general operations of the world. One man therefore doth co-operate after one sort, and another after another sort, but even he that doth murmur, and to his power doth resist and hinder, even he, as much as any doth cooperate, For of such also did the world stand in need. Now do thou consider among which of these thou wilt rank thyself. For as for him who is the administrator of all, he will make good use of thee whether thou wilt or no, and make thee, as a part and member of the whole, so to cooperate with him, that whatsoever thou doest shall turn to the furtherance of his own counsels and resolutions. But be not thou, for shame such a part of the whole, as that vile and ridiculous verse, which Chrysippus in a place doth mention, is a part of the comedy. Never go to the past, not for happiness, not for justification, not for excuses. Great results can be achieved with small forces. The wise man avoids all extremes. If you find something very difficult to achieve yourself, don't imagine it impossible. For anything possible and proper for another person can be achieved as easily by you. Marcus Aurelius
Stop telling people more than they need to know. Give a man power and you will find out who he is. Freedom is not about getting rid of anything. It is about being who you are. Muji. In the morning when thou findest thyself unwilling to rise, consider with thyself presently, it is to go about a man's work that I am stirred up. Am I then yet unwilling to go about that, for which I myself was born and brought forth into this world? Or was I made for this, to lay me down, and make much of myself in a warm bed? Oh, but this is pleasing. And was it then for this, that thou wert born, that thou mightest enjoy pleasure? Was it not in very truth for this, that thou mightest always be busy and in action? Seest thou not how all things in the world besides, how every tree and plant, how sparrows and ants, spiders and bees, how all in their kind are intent, as it were, orderly to perform whatsoever, towards the preservation of this orderly universe, naturally doth become and belong unto thin? And wilt not thou do that which belongs unto a man to do? Wilt not thou run to do that which thy nature doth require? Courage doesn't always roar. Sometimes it's the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Be alone until you're valued. Acta non verba. Deeds, not words. Latin proverb. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. No one raindrop thinks it causes the flood. Your body is a molecular structure with a constantly changing environment, and you have the ability to influence it. Deepak Chopra Is this then a thing of that worth, that for it my soul should suffer and become worse than it was, as either basely dejected or disordinately affected or confounded within itself or terrified, what can there be that thou shouldest so much esteem? Never lend money, because you might lend it to friends for a few days, but retrieve it from fools for years. Many people know they are unhappy, but even more people don't know they are happy. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. Marcus Aurelius Who brings you the most peace should get the most time. The noble person uses things, the lesser man is used by things. Your true nature is pure, unconditioned awareness. Papaji. How easy a thing is it for a man to put off from him all turbulent, adventitious imaginations, and presently to be in perfect rest and tranquility. If you're trying to break a habit, don't say, this is the last time I'm doing it to yourself. Instead, say, this is the first time I'm not doing it. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. Nothing can be done without hope and confidence. In the confrontation between the stream and the rock, the stream always wins, not through strength, but by perseverance. 
Buddha. The best way to respect yourself is to discipline yourself. If you make a girl laugh, you can make her do anything. Your true nature is pure, unconditioned awareness, Papaji. Never say of anything, I have lost it, but rather, I have given it back. Has your child died? It has been given back. Has your wife died? She has been given back. Has your land been taken from you? Well, that too has been given back. But the one who took it from me is a bad man. What concern is it of yours by whose hand the giver asks for its return? For the time that these things are given to you, take care of them as things that belong to another, just as travelers do an inn. Act as if you were already happy, and that will tend to make you happy. Forgive, but do not forget, or you will be hurt again. Forgetting loses the lesson. O dentes fortuna juvat, fortune favors the bold, Virgil. Do not ignore a problem you see coming from a mile away. That foresight is a gift. Don't squander it. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. The universe has no restrictions. You place restrictions on the universe with your expectations. Deepak Chopra Spend not the remnant of thy days in thoughts and fancies concerning other men, when it is not in relation to some common good, when by it thou art hindered from some other better work. That is, spend not thy time in thinking what such a man doth, and to what end, what he saith, and what he thinks, and what he is about, and such other things or curiosities, which make a man to rove and wander from the care and observation of that part of himself which is rational and overruling. See therefore in the whole series and connection of thy thoughts that thou be careful to prevent whatsoever is idle and impertinent, but especially whatsoever is curious and malicious, and thou must use thyself to think only of such things, of which if a man upon a sudden should ask thee, what it is that thou art now thinking, thou mayest answer this and that freely and boldly, that so by thy thoughts it may presently appear that in all thee is sincere and peaceable, as becometh one that is made for society, and regards not pleasures, nor gives way to any voluptuous imaginations at all, free from all contentiousness, envy, and suspicion, and from whatsoever else thou wouldest blush to confess thy thoughts were set upon. He that is such, is he surely that doth not put off to lay hold on that which is best indeed, a very priest and minister of the gods, well acquainted and in good correspondence with him, especially that is seated and placed within himself, as in a temple and sacrary, to whom also he keeps and preserves himself unspotted by pleasure, undaunted by pain, free from any manner of wrong, or contumely, by himself offered unto himself, not capable of any evil from others, a wrestler of the best sort, and for the highest prize, that he may not be cast down by any passion or affection of his own, deeply dyed and drenched in righteousness, embracing and accepting with his whole heart whatsoever either happeneth or is allotted unto him. Of all sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these. It might have been. The cost of being wrong is less than the cost of doing nothing.
In matters of style, swim with the current. In matters of principle, stand like a rock. Thomas Jefferson Learn as if you were not reaching your goal, and as though you were scared of missing it. Time heals almost everything. Give it time. There's no scarcity of opportunity to make a living at what you love. There is only a scarcity of resolve to make it happen. Wayne Dyer All those things for matter of experience are usual and ordinary, for their continuance but for a day, and for their matter most base and filthy. As they were in the days of those whom we have buried, so are they now also, and no otherwise. Not every sweet root gives birth to sweet grass. Don't look back. You are not going that way. You cannot prevent the birds of sorrow from flying over your head, but you can prevent them from building nests in your hair. Chinese proverb. Ingratitude is a kind of weakness. Outstanding people are never ungrateful. Only he who controls himself is free. Stop trying to look rich and start acting rich. Alex Hormozzi Ever to mind and consider with thyself how all things that now are have been heretofore much after the same sort and after the same fashion that now they are and so to think of those things which shall be hereafter also. Moreover, whole dramata and uniform scenes, or scenes that comprehend the lives and actions of men of one calling and profession, as many as either in thine own experience thou hast known, or by reading of ancient histories, as the whole court of Adrianus, the whole court of Antoninus Pius, the whole court of Philippus, that of Alexander, that of Croesus to set them all before thine eyes. For thou shalt find that they are all but after one sort and fashion, only that the actors were others. Life has a way of testing a person's will, either by having nothing happen at all, or by having everything happen at once. Don't compare yourself to others, because no one can play your role better than you. If I followed the multitude, I should not have studied philosophy. Chrysippus You meet every single person for a reason. Just let it be. The more you face challenges, the less you fear them. Be a lifelong student. The more you learn, the more you earn, and the more self-confidence you will have. Brian Tracy To a person who was one of those who was not valued by him, a certain person said to him, Frequently I desired to hear you and came to you, and you never gave me any answer. And now, if it is possible, I entreat you to say something to me. Do you think, said Epictetus, that as there is an art in anything else, so there is also an art in speaking, and that he who has the art will speak skillfully, and he who has not will speak unskillfully? I do think so. He then, who by speaking receives benefit himself and is able to benefit others, will speak skillfully. But he who is rather damaged by speaking and does damage to others, Will he be unskilled in this art of speaking? 
and you may find that some are damaged and others benefited by speaking. And are all who hear benefited by what they hear? Or will you find that among them also some are benefited and some damaged? There are both among these also, he said. In this case also, then, those who hear skillfully are benefited, and those who hear unskillfully are damaged. He admitted this. Is there then a skill in hearing also, as there is in speaking? It seems so. If you choose, consider the matter in this way also. The practice of music, to whom does it belong? To a musician, and the proper making of a statue, to whom do you think that it belongs? To a statuary, and the looking at a statue skillfully, does this appear to you to require the aid of no art? This also requires the aid of art. Then if speaking properly is the business of the skillful man, do you see that to hear also with benefit is the business of the skillful man? Now as to speaking and hearing perfectly and usefully, let us for the present, if you please, say no more. For both of us are a long way from everything of the kind. But I think that every man will allow this, that he who is going to hear philosophers requires some amount of practice in hearing. Is it not so? Tell me then about what I should talk to you. About what matter are you able to listen? About good and evil. Good and evil in what? In a horse? No. Well, in an ox? No. What then? In a man? Yes. Do know then what a man is, what the notion is that we have of him, or have we our ears in any degree practiced about this matter? But do you understand what nature is? Or can you even in any degree understand me when I say, I shall use demonstration to you? How? Do you understand this very thing? What demonstration is, or how anything is demonstrated? Or by what means? or what things are like demonstration, but are not demonstration? Do you know what is true, or what is false? What is consequent on a thing? What is repugnant to a thing, or not consistent, or inconsistent? But must I excite you to philosophy, and how? Shall I show to you the repugnance in the opinions of most men, through which they differ about things good and evil, and about things which are profitable and unprofitable, when you know not this very thing what repugnance is? Show me then what I shall accomplish by discoursing with you. Excite my inclination to do this. As the grass which is suitable when it is presented to a sheep moves its inclination to eat. But if you present to it a stone or bread, it will not be moved to eat. So there are in us certain natural inclinations also to speak when the hearer shall appear to be somebody, when he himself shall excite us, but when he shall sit by us like a stone or like grass, how can he excite a man's desire? Does the vine say to the husbandman, Take care of me? No, but the vine by showing in itself that it will be profitable to the husbandman, if he does take care of it, invites him to exercise care. When children are attractive and lively, whom do they not invite to play with them, and crawl with them, and lisp with them? But who is eager to play with an ass or to bray with it? For though it is small, it is still a little ass. Why then do you say nothing to me? I can only say this to you, that he who knows not who he is, and for what purpose he exists, and what is this world and with whom he is associated, and what things are the good and the bad and the beautiful and the ugly, and who neither understands discourse nor demonstration, nor what is true nor what is false, and who is not able to distinguish them, will neither desire according to nature, nor turn away, nor move upward, nor intend, nor assent, nor dissent, nor suspend his judgment. To say all in a few words, he will go about dumb and blind, thinking that he is somebody but being nobody. Is this so now for the first time? Is it not the fact that, ever since the human race existed, 
All errors and misfortunes have arisen through this ignorance. Why did Agamemnon and Achilles quarrel with one another? Was it not through not knowing what things are profitable and not profitable? Does not the one say it is profitable to restore Chryseis to her father? And does not the other say that it is not profitable? Does not the one say that he ought to take the prize of another? And does not the other say that he ought not? Did they not for these reasons forget both who they were and for what purpose they had come there? O oh, man, for what purpose did you come? To gain mistresses or to fight? To fight? With whom? The Trojans or the Hellenes? With the Trojans? Do you then leave Hector alone and draw your sword against your own king? And do you, most excellent sir, neglect the duties of the king? You, who are the people's guardian, and have such cares? And are you quarreling about a little girl with the most warlike of your allies, whom you ought by every means to take care of and protect? And do you become worse than a well-behaved priest who treats you these fine gladiators with all respect? Do you see what kind of things ignorance of what is profitable does? But I also am rich, are you then richer than Agamemnon? But I am also handsome. Are you then more handsome than Achilles? But I have also beautiful hair. But had not Achilles more beautiful hair and gold-colored, and he did not comb it elegantly nor dress it? But I am also strong. Can you then lift so great a stone as Hector or Ajax? But I am also of noble birth, are you the son of a goddess mother? Are you the son of a father sprung from Zeus? What good then do these things do to him when he sits and weeps for a girl? But I am an orator, and was he not? Do you not see how he handled the most skillful of the Hellenes in oratory, Odysseus and Phoenix? How he stopped their mouths? This is all that I have to say to you, and I say even this not willingly. Why? Because you have not roused me. For what must I look to in order to be roused as men who are expert in are roused by generous horses? Must I look to your body? You treat it disgracefully. To your dress? That is luxurious. To your behavior? To your look? That is the same as nothing. When you would listen to a philosopher, do not say to him, You tell me nothing but only show yourself worthy of hearing or fit for hearing, and you will see how you will move the speaker. Never put relationships before your goals. You may... There is no greater waste of time than justifying your actions to people who have a life you don't want. The buck stops here, Harry S. Truman. Genius is a mind that knows its limits. Love hurts. Friends leave. Things go wrong. But remember that life goes on. What you think you are is not what you are. Alan Watts How rotten and insincere is he that saith, I am resolved to carry myself hereafter towards you with all ingenuity and simplicity. O oh man, what dost thou mean? What needs this profession of thine? The thing itself will show it. It ought to be written upon thy forehead. No sooner thy voice is heard, than thy countenance must be able to show what is in thy mind. Even as he that is loved knows presently by the looks of his sweetheart, what is in her mind. Such must he be for all the world that is truly simple and good as he whose armholes are offensive that whosoever stands by as soon as ever he comes near him may as it were smell him whether he will or no. But the affectation of simplicity is no wise laudable. There is nothing more shameful than perfidious friendship. 
above all things that must be avoided. However true goodness, simplicity and kindness cannot so be hidden, but that as we have already said, in the very eyes and countenance they will show themselves. Avoid disappointment, expect nothing from nobody. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Recognize that if something is humanly possible, you can do it too. Marcus Aurelius Love people, not things. Use things, not people. Strong people are always simple. To find yourself, you must first lose the concept of yourself. Papaji On familiar intimacy. To this matter before all you must attend, that you be never so closely connected with any of your former intimates or friends as to come down to the same acts as he does. If you do not observe this rule, you will ruin yourself. But if the thought arises in your mind, I shall seem disobliging to him, and he will not have the same feeling toward me. Remember that nothing is done without cost, nor is it possible for a man if he does not do the same to be the same man that he was. Choose then which of the two you will have to be equally loved by those by whom you were formerly loved, being the same with your former self, or being superior, not to obtain from your friends the same that you did before. For if this is better, turn away to it, and let not other considerations draw you in a different direction. For no man is able to make progress when he is wavering between opposite things. But if you have preferred this to all things, if you choose to attend to this only, to work out this only, give up everything else. But if you will not do this, your wavering will produce both these results. You will neither improve as you ought, nor will you obtain what you formerly obtained. For before, by plainly desiring the things which were worth nothing, you pleased your associates. But you cannot excel in both kinds, and it is necessary that so far as you share in the one, you must fall short in the other. You cannot, when you do not drink with those with whom you used to drink, be agreeable to them as you were before. Choose then whether you will be a hard drinker and pleasant to your former associates, or a sober man and disagreeable to them. You cannot, when you do not sing with those with whom you used to sing, be equally loved by them. Choose then in this matter also which of the two you will have. For if it is better to be modest and orderly than for a man to say, he is a jolly fellow, give up the rest, renounce it, turn away from it, have nothing to do with such men. But if this behavior shall not please you, turn altogether to the opposite. Become a catamite, an adulterer, and act accordingly and you will get what you wish. And jump up in the theater and bawl out in praise of the dancer. But characters so different cannot be mingled. You cannot act both Thersites and Agamemnon. If you intend to be Thersites, you must be humpbacked and bald. If Agamemnon, you must be tall and handsome and love those who are placed in obedience to you. The only way to live like a king is to work like a slave. Haters are confused admirers who can't understand why everybody else likes you. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. Zig Ziglar Live in reality as it is, not as you wish it was.
Failure is only the opportunity more intelligently to begin again. The present moment is filled with joy and happiness. If you are attentive, you will see it. Tish Nathan. When we say then that pleasure is the end and aim, we do not mean the pleasures of the prodigal or the pleasures of sensuality, as we are understood to do by some through ignorance, prejudice, or willful misrepresentation. By pleasure we mean the absence of pain in the body and of trouble in the soul. It is not an unbroken succession of drinking bouts and of revelry, not sexual lust, not the enjoyment of the fish and other delicacies of a luxurious table which produce a pleasant life. It is sober reasoning, searching out the grounds of every choice and avoidance, and banishing those beliefs through which the greatest tumults take possession of the soul. Of all this, the beginning and the greatest good is wisdom. Therefore, wisdom is a more precious thing even than philosophy. From it spring all the other virtues, for it teaches that we cannot live pleasantly without living wisely, honorably and justly, nor live wisely, honorably and justly without living pleasantly. For the virtues have grown into one with a pleasant life, and a pleasant life is inseparable from them. Who then is superior in your judgment to such a man? He holds a holy belief concerning the gods, and is altogether free from the fear of death. He has diligently considered the end fixed by nature and understands how easily the limit of good things can be reached and attained, and how either the duration or the intensity of evils is but slight. Fate, which some introduce as sovereign over all things, he scorns, affirming rather that some things happen of necessity, others by chance, others through our own agency. For he sees that necessity destroys responsibility and that chance is inconstant whereas our own actions are autonomous, and it is to them that praise and blame naturally attach. It were better indeed to accept the legends of the gods than to bow beneath that yoke of destiny which the natural philosophers have imposed. The one holds out some faint hope that we may escape if we honor the gods, while the necessity of the naturalists is deaf to all entreaties nor does he hold chance to be a god, as the world in general does. For in the acts of a god there is no disorder, nor to be a cause, though an uncertain one. For he believes that no good or evil is dispensed by chance to men so as to make life happy, though it supplies the starting point of great good and great evil. He believes that the misfortune of the wise is better than the prosperity of the fool. It is better, in short, that what is well judged in action should not owe its successful issue to the aid of chance. Exercise yourself in these and related precepts day and night, both by yourself and with one who is like-minded. Then never, either in waking or in dream, will you be disturbed, but will live as a god among men. For man loses all semblance of mortality by living in the midst of immortal blessings. There are no shortcuts to any place worth going. If you knew how rarely we are understood correctly, you would be silent more often. Concern should drive us into action and not into depression. No man is free who cannot control himself. Pythagoras When a defining moment comes along, you can do one of two things. Define the moment, or let the moment define you. Never make a permanent decision based on temporary feelings. In the stillness of the present moment, you will find the truth that has always been with you. Muji
what things we ought to despise and what things we ought to value. The difficulties of all men are about external things. Their helplessness is about externals. What shall I do? How will it be? How will it turn out? Will this happen? Will that? All these are the words of those who are turning themselves to things which are not within the power of the will. For who says, How shall I not assent to that which is false? How shall I not turn away from the truth? If a man be of such a good disposition as to be anxious about these things, I will remind him of this. Why are you anxious? The thing is in your own power. Be assured. Do not be precipitate in assenting before you apply the natural rule. On the other side, if a man is anxious about desire, lest it fail in its purpose and miss its end, and with respect to the avoidance of things, lest he should fall into that which he would avoid, I will first kiss him, because he throws away the things about which others are in a flutter and their fears and employs his thoughts about his own affairs and his own condition. Then I shall say to him, If you do not choose to desire that which you will fall to obtain, nor to attempt to avoid that into which you will fall, desire nothing which belongs to others, nor try to avoid any of the things which are not in your power. If you do not observe this rule, you must of necessity fall in your desires and fall into that which you would avoid. What is the difficulty here? Where is there room for the words, how will it be, and how will it turn out, and will this happen or that? Now is not that which will happen independent of the will? Yes, and the nature of good and of evil, is it not in the things which are within the power of the will? Yes. Is it in your power, then, to treat according to nature everything which happens? Can any person hinder you? No, man. No longer then say to me, How will it be? For however it may be, you will dispose of it well, and the result to you will be a fortunate one. What would Hercules have been if he had said, How shall a great lion not appear to me, or a great boar, or savage men? And what do you care for that? If a great boar appear, you will fight a greater fight. If bad men appear, you relieve the earth of the bad. Suppose, then, that I may lose my life in this way. You will die a good man, doing a noble act. For since we must certainly die, of necessity a man must be found doing something either following the employment of a husbandman, or digging, or trading, or serving in a consulship, or suffering from indigestion, or from diarrhea. What then do you wish to be doing when you are found by death? I, for my part, would wish to be found doing something which belongs to a man, beneficent, suitable to the general interest, noble. But if I cannot be found doing things so great, I would be found doing at least that which I cannot be hindered from doing, that which is permitted me to do, correcting myself, cultivating the faculty which makes use of appearances, laboring at freedom from the affects, rendering to the relations of life their due. If I succeed so far, also touching on the third topic, safety in the forming judgments about things, if death surprises me when I am busy about these things, it is enough for me if I can stretch out my hands to God and say, The means which I have received from Thee for seeing Thy administration and following it, I have not neglected. I have not dishonored Thee by my acts. See how I have used my perceptions. See how I have used my preconceptions. Have I ever blamed Thee? Have I been discontented with anything that happens or wished it to be otherwise? Have I wished to transgress the relations? That Thou hast given me life, I thank Thee for what Thou hast given me. So long as I have used the things which are Thine, I am content. Take them back and place them wherever Thou mayest choose. For Thine were all things Thou gavest them to me.
Is it not enough to depart in this state of mind? And what life is better and more becoming than that of a man who is in this state of mind? And what end is more happy? But that this may be done, a man must receive no small things, nor are the things small which he must lose. You cannot both wish to be a consul and to have these things, and to be eager to have lands and these things also, and to be solicitous about slaves and about yourself. But if you wish for anything which belongs to another, that which is your own is lost. This is the nature of the thing. Nothing is given or had for nothing. And where is the wonder? If you wish to be a consul, you must keep awake, run about, kiss hands, waste yourself with exhaustion at other men's doors, say and do many things unworthy of a free man, send gifts to many, daily presents to some. And what is the thing that is got? Twelve bundles of rods, to sit three or four times on the tribunal, to exhibit the games in the circus, and to give suppers in small baskets. Or, if you do not agree about this, let someone show me what there is besides these things. In order, then, to secure freedom from passions, tranquility, to sleep well when you do sleep, to be really awake when you are awake, to fear nothing, to be anxious about nothing, Will you spend nothing and give no labor? But if anything belonging to you be lost while you are thus busied, or be wasted badly, or another obtains what you ought to have obtained, will you immediately be vexed at what has happened? Will you not take into the account on the other side what you receive and for what? How much for how much? Do you expect to have for nothing things so great? And how can you? One work has no community with another. You cannot have both external things after bestowing care on them and your own ruling faculty. But if you would have those, give up this. If you do not, you will have neither this nor that, while you are drawn in different ways to both. The oil will be spilled. The household vessels will perish. But I shall be free from passions. There will be a fire when I am not present, and the books will be destroyed. But I shall treat appearances according to nature. Well, but I shall have nothing to eat. If I am so unlucky, death is a harbor, and death is the harbor for all. This is the place of refuge, and for this reason not one of the things in life is difficult. As soon as you choose, you are out of the house, and are smoked no more. Why then are you anxious? Why do you lose your sleep? Why do you not straightway, after considering wherein your good is, and your evil say, both of them are in my power? Neither can any man deprive me of the good, nor involve me in the bad against my will. Why do I not throw myself down and snore? For all that I have is safe, as to the things which belong to others, he will look to them who gets them, as they may be given by him who has the power. Who am I who wish to have them in this way or in that? Is a power of selecting them given to me? Has any person made me the dispenser of them? Those things are enough for me over which I have power. I ought to manage them as well as I can. And all the rest, as the master of them may choose. When a man has these things before his eyes, does he keep awake and turn hither and thither? What would he have or what does he regret, Patroclus or Antilochus or Menelaus? For when did he suppose that any of his friends was immortal? And when had he not before his eyes that on the morrow or the day after he or his friend must die? Yes, he says, but I thought that he would survive me and bring up my son. You were a fool for that reason, and you were thinking of what was uncertain. Why, then, do you not blame yourself and sit crying like girls? But he used to set my food before me. Because he was alive, you fool, but now he cannot. But Automedon will set it before you, and if Automedon also dies, you will find another. 
But if the pot in which your meat was cooked should be broken, must you die of hunger, because you have not the pot which you are accustomed to? Do you not send and buy a new pot? He says, No greater ill could fall on me. Why is this your ill? Do you then, instead of removing it, blame your mother for not foretelling it to you that you might continue grieving from that time? What do you think? Do you not suppose that Homer wrote this that we may learn that those of noblest birth, the strongest and the richest, the most handsome, when they have not the opinions which they ought to have, are not prevented from being most wretched and unfortunate? As long as you are alive, no obstacle is permanent. There are no refunds or second chances for the time you waste. Quality is not an act, it is a habit, Aristotle. Respect is earned, honesty is appreciated, trust is gained, loyalty is returned. Not everyone will like you, that's life. Get up early, go get after it, Jocko Willing. A blessed and indestructible being has no trouble himself and brings no trouble upon any other being. So he is free from anger and partiality for all such things imply weakness. If you don't clear your misunderstanding in time, they become the reason for distance forever. To succeed, jump as quickly at opportunities as you do at conclusions. No amount of anxiety makes any difference to anything that is going to happen. Alan Watts Life's biggest tragedy is that we get old too soon and wise too late. Numbing the pain for a while will make it worse when you finally feel it. Don't measure yourself by what you've accomplished, but by what you should have accomplished with your ability. Alex Hormozzi The true joy of a man is to do that which properly belongs unto a man. That which is most proper unto a man is, first, to be kindly affected towards them that are of the same kind and nature as he is himself, to contemn all sensual motions and appetites, to discern rightly all plausible fancies and imaginations, to contemplate the nature of the universe, both it and things that are done in it, in which kind of contemplation three several relations are to be observed, the first to the apparent secondary cause, the second to the first original cause, God, from whom originally proceeds whatsoever doth happen in the world, the third and last, to them that we live and converse with, what use may be made of it to their use and benefit. Ask yourself at every moment, is this necessary? It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. Attach yourself to what is spiritually superior, regardless of what other people think or do. Hold to your true aspirations no matter what is going on around you. Epictetus What is not started today is never finished tomorrow. If you love someone, you must be prepared to set them free.
The walls we build around us to keep sadness out also keep out the joy. Jim Rohn This, what is it in itself, and by itself, according to its proper constitution? What is the substance of it? What is the matter or proper use? What is the form or efficient cause? What is it for in this world, and how long will it abide? Thus must thou examine all things that present themselves unto thee. Overthinking, depression, saying no to important things, revenge, ruining your own life, observing, increase in wisdom, forgiving, healing, letting go, peace of mind. Always place your becoming above your current being. The superior man is modest in his speech, but exceeds in his actions. Confucius. Being lonely and being alone are different things. Except what is. Let go of what was, have faith in what will be. The meeting of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is any reaction, both are transformed. Carl Jung Use thine opinative faculty with all honor and respect, for in her indeed is all, that thy opinion do not beget in thy understanding anything contrary to either nature or the proper constitution of a rational creature. The end and object of a rational constitution is to do nothing rashly, to be kindly affected towards men, and in all things willingly to submit unto the gods. Casting therefore all other things aside, keep thyself to these few, and remember withal that no man properly can be said to live more than that which is now present, which is but a moment of time. Whatsoever is besides either is already past or uncertain. The time therefore that any man doth live is but a little, and the place where he liveth is but a very little corner of the earth, and the greatest fame that can remain of a man after his death even that is but little, and that too, such as it is whilst it is, is by the succession of silly mortal men preserved, who likewise shall shortly die, and even whilst they live know not what in very deed they themselves are. And much less can know one, who long before is dead and gone. Finding the lesson behind every adversity will be the one important thing that helps get you through it. Better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for something you are not. The first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. Plato Only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. He that can have patience can have what he will. If you can't, you must. If you must, you can. Tony Robbins That confidence is not inconsistent with caution. The opinion of the philosophers perhaps seems to some to be a paradox, but still let us examine as well as we can if it is true that it is possible to do everything both with caution and with confidence. For caution seems to be in a manner contrary to confidence, and contraries are in no way consistent. That which seems to many to be a paradox in the matter under consideration in my opinion is of this kind. 
If we asserted that we ought to employ caution and in the same things, men might justly accuse us of bringing together things which cannot be united. But now where is the difficulty in what is said? For if these things are true, which have been often said and often proved, that the nature of good is in the use of appearances, and the nature of evil likewise, and that things independent of our will do not admit either the nature of evil nor of good. What paradox do the philosophers assert if they say that where things are not dependent on the will, there you should employ confidence, but where they are dependent on the will, there you should employ caution. For if the bad consists in a bad exercise of the will, caution ought only to be used where things are dependent on the will. But if things independent of the will and not in our power are nothing to us, with respect to these we must employ confidence, and thus we shall both be cautious and confident, and indeed confident because of our caution. For by employing caution toward things which are really bad, it will result that we shall have confidence with respect to things which are not so. We are then in the condition of deer, when they flee from the huntsman's feathers in fright, whither do they turn and in what do they seek refuge as safe? They turn to the nets, and thus they perish by confounding things which are objects of fear with things that they ought not to fear. Thus we also act. In what cases do we fear? In things which are independent of the will. In what cases, on the contrary, do we behave with confidence, as if there were no danger? In things dependent on the will. To be deceived then, or to act rashly, or shamelessly, or with base desire to seek something, does not concern us at all if we only hit the mark in things which are independent of our will. But where there is death or exile or pain or infamy, there we attempt or examine to run away, there we are struck with terror. Therefore, as we may expect it to happen with those who err in the greatest matters, we convert natural confidence into audacity. Therefore, as we may expect it to happen with those who err in the greatest matters, we convert natural confidence into audacity, desperation, rashness, shamelessness. And we convert natural caution and modesty into cowardice and meanness, which are full of fear and confusion. For if a man should transfer caution to those things in which the will may be exercised and the acts of the will, he will immediately, by willing to be cautious, have also the power of avoiding what he chooses. But if he transfer it to the things which are not in his power and will, and attempt to avoid the things which are in the power of others, he will of necessity fear, he will be unstable, he will be disturbed. For death or pain is not formidable, but the fear of pain or death. For this reason we commend the poet who said, Not death is evil, but a shameful death. Confidence then ought to be employed against death, and caution against the fear of death. But now we do the contrary, and employ against death the attempt to escape, and to our opinion about it we employ carelessness, rashness, and indifference. These things Socrates properly used to call tragic masks. For as to children masks appear terrible and fearful from inexperience, we also are affected in like manner by events for no other reason than children are by masks. For what is a child? Ignorance. What is a child? Want of knowledge. For when a child knows these things, he is in no way inferior to us. What is death? A tragic mask. Turn it and examine it. See, it does not bite. The poor body must be separated from the spirit either now or later, as it was separated from it before. Why then are you troubled, if it be separated now? For if it is not separated now, it will be separated afterward. Why? That the period of the universe may be completed, for it has need of the present and of the future and of the past. What is pain? A mask. Turn it and examine it. The poor flesh is moved roughly, then on the contrary smoothly. If this does not satisfy you, the door is open. 
if it does bear, for the door ought to be open for all occasions, and so we have no trouble. What then is the fruit of these opinions? It is that which ought to he the most noble and the most becoming to those who are really educated, release from perturbation, release from fear, freedom. For in these matters we must not believe the many who say that free persons only ought to be educated, but we should rather believe the philosophers who say that the educated only are free. How is this? In this manner. Is freedom anything else than the power of living as we choose? Nothing else. Tell me then, ye men, do you wish to live in error? We do not. No one then who lives in error is free. Do you wish to live in fear? Do you wish to live in sorrow? Do you wish to live in perturbation? By no means. No one then who is in a state of fear or sorrow or perturbation is free. But whoever is delivered from sorrows and fears and perturbations, he is at the same time also delivered from servitude. How then can we continue to believe you, most dear legislators, when you say, we only allow free persons to be educated? For philosophers say, we allow none to be free except the educated. That is, God does not allow it. When then a man has turned round before the praetor his own slave, has he done nothing? He has done something. What? He has turned round his own slave before the praetor. Has he done nothing more? Yes. He is also bound to pay for him the tax called the twentieth. Well then, is not the man who has gone through this ceremony become free? No more than he has become free from perturbations. Have you who are able to turn round others no master? Is not money your master, or a girl, or a boy, or some tyrant, or some friend of the tyrant? Why do you tremble then when you are going off to any trial of this kind? It is for this reason that I often say, study and hold in readiness these principles by which you may determine what those things are with reference to which you ought to have confidence, and those things with reference to which you ought to be cautious, courageous, in that which does not depend on your will, cautious in that which does depend on it. Well, have I not read to you, and do you not know what I was doing? In what? In my little dissertations. Show me how you are with respect to desire and aversion, and show if you do not fail in getting what you wish, me and if you do not fall into the things which you would avoid. But as to these long and labored sentences, you will take them and blot them out. What then did not Socrates write? And who wrote so much? But how? As he could not always have at hand one to argue against his principles or to be argued against in turn, he used to argue with and examine himself, and he was always treating at least some one subject in a practical way. These are the things which a philosopher writes. But little dissertations and that method which I speak of, he leaves to others, to the stupid, or to those happy men who being free from perturbations have leisure, or to such as are too foolish to reckon consequences. And will you now, when the opportunity invites, go and display those things which you possess, and recite them, and make an idle show, and say, See how I make dialogues. Do not so, my man, but rather say, See how I am not disappointed of that which I desire. See how I do not fall into that which I would avoid. Set death before me, and you will see. Set before me pain, prison, disgrace, and condemnation. This is the proper display of a young man who has come out of the schools. But leave the rest to others and let no one ever hear you say a word about these things. And if any man commends you for them, do not allow it, but think that you are nobody and know nothing. Only show that you know this, how never to be disappointed in your desire, and how never to fall into that which you would avoid. Let others labor at forensic causes, problems and syllogisms, 
do you labor at thinking about death, chains, the rack, exile, and do all this with confidence and reliance on him who has called you to these sufferings, who has judged you worthy of the place in which being stationed, you will show what things the rational governing power can do when it takes its stand against the forces which are not within the power of our will. And thus this paradox will no longer appear either impossible or a paradox, that a man ought to be at the same time cautious and courageous, courageous toward the things which do not depend on the will, and cautious in things which are within the power of the will. You need enemies to succeed. Bad times are actually a boon because they wake you up to the good things you never paid attention to. The forms are eternal and unchanging, and they are the true reality. Plato. This quote encapsulates Plato's theory of forms which posits a realm of perfect and unchanging entities that serve as the blueprints for the world we perceive. Often the best things happen unexpectedly. At first you choose a partner based on appearance and enjoy it until you realize that your children will be raised not based on appearance but based on values. You are the eternal witness, the unchanging reality behind all experiences. Nisargadatta Maharaj By one action judge of the rest, this bathing which usually takes up so much of our time, what is it? Oil, sweat, filth, or the swords of the body, an excrementitious viscosity, the excrements of oil and other ointments used about the body and mixed with the swords of the body, all base and loathsome. And such almost is every part of our life and every worldly object. If you know how it's done, it doesn't mean it's not magic. There was never a bad peace or a good war. The person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the person who is doing it. Chinese proverb. Seek respect, not attention. It lasts longer. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. Giving up is what makes it permanent. You see, in life, lots of people know what to do, but few people actually do what they know. Knowing is not enough. You must take action. Tony Robbins If at any time it should happen that you turn to external things with the aim of pleasing someone, understand that you have ruined your life's plan. Be content then, in everything with being a philosopher. And if you wish also to be regarded as such, appear so to yourself, and that will be sufficient. Man's manners are a mirror in which his portrait is reflected. Decide, much is expected from that to whom much is given. Think of the life you have lived until now, as over and as a dead man. See what's left as a bonus and live it according to nature. Love the hand that fate deals you and play it as your own. For what could be more fitting? Marcus Aurelius Anyone who can make you angry becomes your master.
when talking to people, look them in the eye and on the face. This will make you more confident in front of others. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality, Les Brown. About freedom. He is free who lives as he wishes to live, who is neither subject to compulsion nor to hindrance nor to force, whose movements to action are not impeded, whose desires attain their purpose, and who does not fall into that which he would avoid. Who then chooses to live in error? No man. Who chooses to live deceived, liable to mistake, unjust, unrestrained, discontented, mean? No man. Not one then of the bad lives as he wishes, nor is he then free. And who chooses to live in sorrow, fear, envy, pity, desiring and failing in his desires, attempting to avoid something and falling into it? Not one. Do we then find any of the bad free from sorrow, free from fear, who does not fall into that which he would avoid, and does not obtain that which he wishes? Not one. Nor then do we find any bad man free. If then a man who has been twice consul should hear this, if you add, but you are a wise man, this is nothing to you, he will pardon you. But if you tell him the truth and say, you differ not at all from those who have been thrice sold as to being yourself not a slave. What else ought you to expect than blows? For he says, What I a slave, I whose father was free, whose mother was free, I whom no man can purchase. I am also of senatorial rank, and a friend of Caesar, and I have been a consul, and I own many slaves. In the first place, most excellent senatorial man. Perhaps your father also was a slave in the same kind of servitude, and your mother and your grandfather and all your ancestors in an ascending series. But even if they were as free as it is possible, what is this to you? What if they were of a noble nature, and you of a mean nature? If they were fearless, and you a coward? If they had the power of self-restraint? and you are not able to exercise it. And what, you may say, has this to do with being a slave? Does it seem to you to be nothing to do a thing unwillingly, with compulsion, with groans? Has this nothing to do with being a slave? It is something, you say. But who is able to compel me except the Lord of all Caesar? Then even you yourself have admitted that you have one master, but that he is the common master of all, as you say. Let not this console you at all, but know that you are a slave in a great family. So also the people of Nicopolis are used to exclaim, by the fortune of Caesar, are free. However, if you please, let us not speak of Caesar at present, but tell me this, did you never love any person, a young girl or slave or free? What then is this with respect to being a slave or free? Were you never commanded by the person beloved to do something which you did not wish to do? Have you never flattered your little slave? Have you never kissed her feet? And yet if any man compelled you to kiss Caesar's feet, you would think it an insult and excessive tyranny. What else then is slavery? Did you never go out by night to some place whither you did not wish to go? Did you not expend what you did not wish to expend? Did you not utter words with sighs and groans? Did you not submit to abuse and to be excluded? But if you are ashamed to confess your own acts, see what Thrasonides says and does, who having seen so much military service, as perhaps not even you have, first of all, went out by night, when Geta does not venture out, but if he were compelled by his master, would have cried out much, and would have gone out lamenting his bitter slavery. Next, what does Thrasonides say? A worthless girl has enslaved me, me whom no enemy ever did. Unhappy man, who are the slave even of a girl, and a worthless girl. 
Why then do you still call yourself free? And why do you talk of your service in the army? Then he calls for a sword and is angry with him, who out of kindness refuses it. And he sends presents to her who hates him, and entreats and weeps. And on the other hand, having had a little success, he is elated. But even then, how? Was he free enough neither to desire nor to fear? Now consider in the case of animals, how we employ the notion of liberty. Men keep tame lions shut up and feed them, and some take them about. And who will say that this lion is free? Is it not the fact that the more he lives at his ease, so much the more he is in a slavish condition? And who, if he had perception and reason, would wish to be one of these lions? Well, these birds, when they are caught and are kept shut up, how much do they suffer in their attempts to escape? And some of them die of hunger rather than submit to such a kind of life. And as many of them as live, hardly live and with suffering pine away. And if they ever find any opening, they make their escape. So much do they desire their natural liberty and to be independent and free from hindrance. And what harm is there to you in this? What do you say? I am formed by nature to fly where I choose, to live in the open air, to sing when I choose. You deprive me of all this and say, what harm is it to you? For this reason we shall say that those animals only are free which cannot endure capture, but as soon as they are caught, escape from captivity by death. So Diogenes says that there is one way to freedom, and that is to die content. And he writes to the Persian king, You cannot enslave the Athenian state any more than you can enslave fishes. How is that? Cannot I catch them? If you catch them, says Diogenes, they will immediately leave you as fishes do. For if you catch a fish, it dies. And if these men that are caught shall die, of what use to you is the preparation for war? These are the words of a free man who had carefully examined the thing, and, as was natural, had discovered it. But if you look for it in a different place from where it is, what wonder if you never find it? The slave wishes to be set free immediately. Why? Do you think that he wishes to pay money to the collectors of twentieths? No but because he imagines that hitherto, through not having obtained this, he is hindered and unfortunate. If I shall be set free, immediately it is all happiness. I care for no man. I speak to all as an equal, and like to them I go where I choose. I come from any place I choose and go where I choose. Then he is set free, and forthwith, having no place where he can eat, he looks for some man to flatter, someone with whom he shall sup. Then he either works with his body and endures the most dreadful things, and if he can obtain a manger, he falls into a slavery much worse than his former slavery, or even if he has become rich. Being a man without any knowledge of what is good, he loves some little girl and in his happiness laments and desires to be a slave again. He says, what evil did I suffer in my state of slavery? Another clothed me, another supplied me with shoes, another fed me, another looked after me in sickness, and I did only a few services for him. But now a wretched man, what things I suffer, being a slave of many instead of to one. But however, he says, if I shall acquire rings, then I shall live most prosperously and happily. First, in order to acquire these rings, he submits to that which he is worthy of. Then, when he has acquired them, it is again all the same. Then, he says, if I shall be engaged in military service, I am free from all evils. He obtains military service. He suffers as much as a flogged slave, and nevertheless he asks for a second service and a third. After this, when he has put the finishing stroke to his career and has become a senator, then he becomes a slave by entering into the assembly. 
Then he serves the finer and most splendid slavery. Not to be a fool, but to learn what Socrates taught. What is the nature of each thing that exists? And that a man should not rashly adapt preconceptions to the several things which are. For this is the cause to men of all their evils, the not being able to adapt the general preconceptions to the several things. But we have different opinions. One man thinks that he is sick. Not so, however, but the fact is that he does not adapt his preconceptions right. Another thinks that he is poor. Another that he has a severe father or mother. And another again, that Caesar is not favorable to him. But all this is one and only one thing, the not knowing how to adapt the preconceptions. For who has not a preconception of that which is bad, that it is hurtful, that it ought to be avoided, that it ought in every way to be guarded against? One preconception is not repugnant to another, only where it comes to the matter of adaptation. What then is this evil, which is both hurtful and a thing to be avoided? He answers, not to be Caesar's friend. He has gone far from the mark. He has missed the adaptation. He is embarrassed. He seeks the things which are not at all pertinent to the matter. For when he has succeeded in being Caesar's friend, nevertheless he has failed in finding what he sought. For what is that which every man seeks? To live secure, to be happy, to do everything as he wishes, not to be hindered nor compelled. When then he has become the friend of Caesar, is he free from hindrance? Free from compulsion? Is he tranquil? Is he happy? Of whom shall we inquire? What more trustworthy witness have we than this very man, who has become Caesar's friend? Come forward and tell us when did you sleep more quietly, now or before you became Caesar's friend? Focus on improving yourself, not proving yourself. Time is money. Nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. Abraham Lincoln Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. He who is satisfied with his lot is rich. Don't be distracted by criticism. Remember, the only taste of success some people get is to take a bite out of you. Zig Ziglar What object soever our reasonable and sociable faculty doth meet with that affords nothing either for the satisfaction of reason or for the practice of charity, she worthily doth think unworthy of herself. Don't moan, don't complain. Learn to be thick-skinned. Make the most of what you can. Go forth on your path as it exists only through your walking. It is better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Chinese proverb E. Our only limitations are those we set up in our own minds. No work is beneath you. The only thing that should be beneath you is your big ego. Work hard in silence and show your skills at the job you get, rather than criticizing the job. Stay humble, or you will stumble. Jocko Willink He that is unjust is also impious. For the nature of the universe having made all reasonable creatures one for another, 
to the end that they should do one another good, more or less according to the several persons and occasions, but in no wise hurt one another. It is manifest that he that doth transgress against this her will is guilty of impiety towards the most ancient and venerable of all the deities. For the nature of the universe is the nature the common parent of all, and therefore piously to be observed of all things that are, and that which now is, to whatsoever first was, and gave it its being, hath relation of blood and kindred. She is also called truth, and is the first cause of all truths. He therefore that willingly and wittingly doth lie, is impious in that he doth receive, and so commit injustice. But he that against his will, in that he disagreeth from the nature of the universe, and in that striving with the nature of the world, he doth in his particular violate the general order of the world. For he doth no better than strive and war against it, who contrary to his own nature, applieth himself to that which is contrary to truth. For nature had before furnished him with instincts and opportunities sufficient for the attainment of it, which he having hitherto neglected, is not now able to discern that which is false from that which is true. He also that pursues after pleasures, as that which is truly good and flies from pains, as that which is truly evil, is impious. For such a one must of necessity oftentimes accuse that common nature, as distributing many things both unto the evil and unto the good, not according to the deserts of either, as unto the bad oftentimes pleasures, and the causes of pleasures, so unto the good, pains, and the occasions of pains. Again, he that feareth pains and crosses in this world, feareth some of those things which some time or other must needs happen in the world, and that we have already showed to be impious. And he that pursueth after pleasures will not spare to compass his desires, to do that which is unjust, and that is manifestly impious. Now those things which unto nature are equally indifferent, for she had not created both, both pain and pleasure, if both had not been unto her equally indifferent. They that will live according to nature must in those things, as being of the same mind and disposition that she is, be as equally indifferent. Whosoever therefore in either matter of pleasure and pain, death and life, honor and dishonor, which things nature in the administration of the world indifferently doth make use of, is not as indifferent. It is apparent that he is impious. When I say that common nature doth indifferently make use of them, my meaning is that they happen indifferently in the ordinary course of things, which by a necessary consequence, whether as principal or accessory, come to pass in the world, according to that first and ancient deliberation of providence, by which she from some certain beginning did resolve upon the creation of such a world, conceiving then in her womb as it were some certain rational generative seeds and faculties of things future, whether subjects, changes, successions, both such and such, and just so many. If you want to succeed, stop telling people more than they need to know. Everything is hard before it is easy. You can do what you have to do, and sometimes you can do it even better than you think you can. Jimmy Carter Adversity is like a strong wind. It tears away from us all but the things that cannot be torn, so that we see ourselves as we really are. People often confuse stress with responsibility. That mountain you've been carrying, you were only supposed to climb. Take care of your people and they will take care of you. Jocko Willink. That which is a hindrance of the senses is an evil to the sensitive nature. That which is a hindrance of the appetitive and persecutive faculty is an evil to the sensitive nature. As of the sensitive, so of the vegetative constitution, whatsoever is a hindrance unto it is also in that respect an evil unto the same.
and so likewise, whatsoever is a hindrance unto the mind and understanding, must needs be the proper evil of the reasonable nature. Now apply all those things unto thyself. Do either pain or pleasure seize on thee? Let the senses look to that. Hast thou met with some obstacle or other in thy purpose and intention? If thou didst propose without due reservation and exception, now hath thy reasonable part received a blow indeed. But if in general thou didst propose unto thyself whatsoever might be, thou art not thereby either hurt nor properly hindered. For in those things that properly belong unto the mind, she cannot be hindered by any man. It is not fire nor iron, nor the power of a tyrant, nor the power of a slandering tongue, nor anything else that can penetrate into her. Ponder and deliberate before you make a move. Be prepared to change your ideas about who you want to be. This is an important feedback loop as you gain life experience. The journey is the reward, Chinese proverb. The noble person uses things, the lesser man is used by things. When you get married, everything good about your relationship and everything bad about your relationship intensifies. What you are seeking is already within you, Muji. Let not the general representation unto thyself of the wretchedness of this our mortal life trouble thee. Let not thy mind wander up and down and heap together in her thoughts the many troubles and grievous calamities which thou art as subject unto as any other. But as everything in particular doth happen, Put this question unto thyself and say, What is it that in this present matter seems unto thee so intolerable? For thou wilt be ashamed to confess it. Then upon this presently call to mind, that neither that which is future, nor that which is past can hurt thee, but that only which is present, and that also is much lessened, if thou dost lightly circumscribe it. And then check thy mind, if for so little a while, a mere instant, it cannot hold out with patience. Go forth on your path, as it exists only through your walking. Don't feel harmed, and you haven't been. Sapere aude, dare to know, Horace. Learn to be the person you need to be, and then others will need you too. If a woman is angry, it means she is not only wrong, but also she knows it. If you put yourself in a position where you have to stretch outside your comfort zone, then you are forced to expand your consciousness. Les Brown For whatsoever it be that is now present shall ever be embraced by me as a fit and seasonable object, both for my reasonable faculty and for my sociable or charitable inclination to work upon. And that which is principal in this matter is that it may be referred either unto the praise of God or to the good of men. For either unto God or man, whatsoever it is that doth happen in the world, hath in the ordinary course of nature its proper reference. Neither is there anything that in regard of nature is either new or reluctant and intractable, but all things both usual and easy. Everyone hears only what he understands. Pride
pride and excess bring disaster for man. The nation which indulges towards another a habitual hatred or a habitual fondness is in some degree a slave. George Washington You're the only person who has to be with yourself 100% of the time, so start liking yourself and who you are. The most important thing we learn at school is the fact that the most important things can't be learned at school. Smile, breathe, and go slowly. Thich Nhat Hanh. Whatsoever in any kind doth happen to anyone is expedient to the whole, and thus much to content us might suffice that it is expedient for the whole in general. But yet this also shalt thou generally perceive, if thou dost diligently take heed, that whatsoever doth happen to any one man or men. And now I am content that the word expedient should more generally be understood of those things which we otherwise call middle things, or things indifferent, as health, wealth, and the like. Begin. It wants to live and count each separate day as a separate life. We are not rich by what we possess, but by what we can do without. Men seek out retreats for themselves in the country, by the seaside, on the mountains. Nowhere can a man find a retreat more peaceful or more free from trouble than his own soul. Marcus Aurelius You'll see the most clearly at your life's darkest moments. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. The most basic condition for happiness is freedom. Here we do not mean political freedom, but freedom from the mental formations of anger, despair, jealousy and delusion. As long as these poisons are still in our heart, happiness cannot be possible. Tish Nat Han What is the nature of the good? God is beneficial, but the good also is beneficial. It is consistent then that where the nature of God is, there also the nature of the good should be. What then is the nature of God? Flesh? Certainly not. An estate in land? By no means. Fame? No. Is it intelligence, knowledge, right reason? Yes. Herein then simply seek the nature of the good, for I suppose that you do not seek it in a plant, no. Do you seek it in an irrational animal? No. If then you seek it in a rational animal, why do you still seek it anywhere except in the superiority of rational over irrational animals? Now plants have not even the power of using appearances and for this reason you do not apply the term good to them. The good then requires the use of appearances. Does it require this use only? For if you say that it requires this use only, Say that the good and that happiness and unhappiness are in irrational animals also. But you do not say this, and you do right. For if they possess even in the highest degree the use of appearances, yet they have not the faculty of understanding the use of appearances. And there is good reason for this. For they exist for the purpose of serving others, and they exercise no superiority. For the ass, I suppose, does not exist for any superiority over others. No, but because we had need of a back which is able to bear something. And in truth we had need also of his being able to walk. And for this reason he received also the faculty of making use of appearances. For otherwise he would not have been able to walk. And here then the matter stopped. 
or if he had also received the faculty of comprehending the use of appearances, it is plain that consistently with reason he would not then have been subjected to us, nor would he have done us these services, but he would have been equal to us and like to us. Will you not then seek the nature of good in the rational animal? For if it is not there, you not choose to say that it exists in any other thing. What then? Are not plants and animals also the works of God? They are, but they are not superior things, nor yet parts of the gods. But you are a superior thing. You are a portion separated from the deity. You have in yourself a certain portion of him. Why then are you ignorant of your own noble descent? Why do you not know whence you came? Will you not remember when you are eating, who you are, who eat, and whom you feed? When you are in conjunction with a woman, will you not remember who you are who do this thing? When you are in social intercourse, when you are exercising yourself, when you are engaged in discussion, know you not that you are nourishing a god, that you are exercising a god? Wretch, you are carrying about a god with you, and you know it not. Do you think that I mean some god of silver or of gold and external? You carry him within yourself, and you perceive not that you are polluting him by impure thoughts and dirty deeds. And if an image of God were present, you would not dare to do any of the things which you are doing. But when God himself is present within and sees all and hears all, you are not ashamed of thinking such things and doing such things, ignorant as you are of your own nature and subject to the anger of God. Then why do we fear when we are sending a young man from the school into active life, lest he should do anything improperly, eat improperly, have improper intercourse with women, and lest the rags in which he is wrapped should debase him, lest fine garments should make him proud? This youth does not know his own God. He knows not with whom he sets out. But can we endure when he says, I wish I had you with me. Have you not God with you? And do you seek for any other when you have him? Or will God tell you anything else than this? If you were a statue of Phidias, either Athena or Zeus, you would think broth of yourself and of the artist. And if you had any understanding, you would try to do nothing unworthy of him who made you or of yourself, and try not to appear in an unbecoming dress to those who look on you. But now because Zeus has made you, for this reason do you care not how you shall appear? And yet, is the artist like the artist in the other? Or the work in the one case like the other? And what work of an artist, for instance, has in itself the faculties which the artist shows in making it? Is it not marble or bronze or gold or ivory? And the Athena of Phidias, when she has once extended the hand and received in it the figure of victory, stands in that attitude forever. But the works of God have power of motion. They breathe. They have the faculty of using the appearances of things and the power of examining them. Being the work of such an artist, do you dishonor him? And what shall I say? Not only that he made you, but also entrusted you to yourself and made you a deposit to yourself. Will you not think of this too, but do you also dishonor your guardianship? But if God had entrusted an orphan to you, would you thus neglect him? He has delivered yourself to your care and says, I had no one fitter to entrust him to than yourself. Keep him for me, such as he is by nature, modest, faithful, erect, unterrified free from passion and perturbation. And then you do not keep him such. But some will say, Whence has this fellow got the arrogance which he displays and these supercilious looks? I have not yet so much gravity as befits a philosopher, for I do not yet feel confidence in what I have learned and what I have assented to. I still fear my own weakness. Let me get confidence and the you shall see a countenance such as I ought to have and an attitude such as I ought to have. 
Then I will show to you the statue when it is perfected, when it is polished. What do you expect? A supercilious countenance? Does the Zeus at Olympia lift up his brow? No, his look is fixed as becomes him who is ready to say, Irrevocable is my word and shall not fail. Such will I show myself to you, faithful, modest, noble, free from perturbation. What, an immortal too, exempt from old age and from sickness? No, but dying as becomes a god, sickening as becomes a god. This power I possess, this I can do, but the rest I do not possess, nor can I do. I will show the nerves of a philosopher. What nerves are these? A desire never disappointed, an aversion which never falls on that which it would avoid, a proper pursuit, a diligent purpose, an assent which is not rash. These you shall see. Never leave till tomorrow that which you can do today. How others see you is not important. How you see yourself means everything. Leadership is not about the next election, it's about the next generation. Simon Sinek Never close your lips to those whom you have already opened your heart to. Don't be afraid to take risks and try new things. Life is too short to always play it safe. Life is a struggle. It is a fight. It is a wrestle. Jocko Willink Within a very little while thou wilt be either ashes or a skeletum and a name perchance, and perchance not so much as a name. And what is that but an empty sound and a rebounding echo? Those things which in this life are dearest unto us, and of most account, they are in themselves but vain, putrid, contemptible, the most weighty and serious, if rightly esteemed, but as puppies, biting one another, or untoward children, now laughing and then crying. As for faith and modesty and justice and truth, they long since, as one of the poets hath it, have abandoned this spacious earth and retired themselves unto heaven. What is it then that doth keep thee here, if things sensible be so mutable and unsettled, and the senses so obscure and so fallible, and our souls nothing but an exhalation of blood, and to be in credit among such, be but vanity. What is it that thou dost stay for? An extinction or a translation, either of them with a propitious and contented mind. But still that time come, what will content thee? What else but to worship and praise the gods, and to do good unto men, to bear with them, and to forbear to do them any wrong? and for all external things, belonging either to this thy wretched body or life, to remember that they are neither thine nor in thy power. In the face of adversity, remember that diamonds are made under pressure. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Courage is the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees the others. Aristotle No relationship is worth damaging your mental health. Depend on yourself, never on others. Being too nice breaks you. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. The mind will try to convince you that you are incomplete. The truth is, you are whole and complete.
मुझे माइंडसेट माइंड ओवर मैटर इज अ पावरफुल एक्सप्रेशन योर एबिलिटी टू कॉन्शियसली कंट्रोल योर माइंडसेट is what makes you mentally tough and ready for life's challenges. The secret to achieving this resilient state lies in taking control of your thoughts and allowing your thoughts to control your behaviors, not the other way around. Your ability to take control of your emotional responses and live a stoic-inspired life is the secret to success, to your happiness, and to your improved well-being. When you are able to see situations as opportunities and emotional responses as conscious choices, when you realize things don't happen to you but rather with you, your outlook completely changes. How you see your situation affects and influences how you feel about that situation. You are not merely a byproduct of your circumstances. You are a choosing being who has the ability to determine your emotional responses. which in turn shapes how you view the world yourselves and others but learning to change your perspectives takes practice practice which will in turn help increase your self confidence by practicing cognitive restructuring you can retrain your brain and create new habits that will make you the master of any situation when choosing how you feel and react becomes your choice you will feel more in control not everyone is down for you like they say they are folks are usually about as happy as they make up their minds to be the foundation of every state is the education of its youth diogenes If it's meant to be, it will happen. Keep your personal life private and not telling everyone everything even when you have a lot to say is top-tier self-care. Sometimes you have to go through the mud to get to the good stuff. David Goggins. If once round and solid, there is no fear that ever it will change. Sometimes you will be disappointed and heartbroken multiple times, but it's how you respond that matters. When thinking about life, remember this. No amount of guilt can change the past, and no amount of anxiety can change the future If you wish to control others you must first control yourself Today is victory over yourself of yesterday tomorrow is your victory over lesser men Miyamoto Musashi Many people take no care of their money until they come near the end of it and others do the same with their time never let others know your weaknesses instead always try to show up your positives you don't get paid for the hour you get paid for the value you bring to the hour jim rome not to wander out of the way but upon every motion and desire to perform that which is just and ever to be careful to attain to the true natural apprehension of every fancy that presents itself courage is not having the strength to go on it is going on when you don't have the strength Procrastination is the thief of time. Call it what you want, but one day in retrospect, the years of struggle will strike you as the most beautiful.
You will earn the respect of all if you begin by earning the respect of yourself. Don't expect to encourage good deeds in people conscious of your own misdeeds. Musonius Rufus Just because you got away with a bad decision doesn't make it a good decision. The moment poverty walks in through the door, love and peace toss themselves out of the window. People have a hard time letting go of their suffering. Out of a fear of the unknown, they prefer suffering that is familiar. Tishnat Han. Again, we regard independence of outward things as a great good, not so as in all cases to use little, but so as to be contented with little if we have not much, being honestly persuaded that they have the sweetest enjoyment of luxury, who stand least in need of it, and that whatever is natural is easily procured and only the vain and worthless hard to win. Plain fare gives as much pleasure as a costly diet when once the pain of want has been removed, while bread and water confer the highest possible pleasure when they are brought to hungry lips. To habituate oneself, therefore, to simple and inexpensive diet supplies all that is needful for health and enables a man to meet the necessary requirements of life without shrinking, and it places us in a better condition when we approach at intervals a costly fare and renders us fearless of fortune. Think before you spend. Earn before you quit. Try. Remember, five years ago, you dreamed about being where you are now. Think about it. There is no fear for one whose mind is not filled with desires. Buddha. Don't tell your friends that you're happy. Don't make them angry. Don't tell your enemies that you're unhappy. Don't make them happy. Prosperity is not without many fears and disasters, and adversity is not without comforts and hopes. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself, Rumi. Again, she compasseth the whole world, and penetrateth into the vanity, and mere outside, wanting substance and solidity of it, and stretcheth herself unto the infiniteness of eternity, and the revolution or restoration of all things after a certain period of time, to the same state and place as before, she fetcheth about and doth comprehend in herself, and considers with all, and sees clearly this, that neither they that shall follow us, shall see any new thing that we have not seen, nor they that went before anything more than we. Recognize a problem. It's half the success in solving it. One always has enough time if one applies it well. It is not death that a man should fear but he should fear never beginning to live. Seneca encourages us to embrace life fully and not waste our time living in fear or indecision. He urges us to live with passion and purpose. If you think adventure is dangerous, try routine. It is lethal. The world belongs to the patient. Time flies. One day, you are 30. The next, you are 50. Plan now for what you want 50 to look like.
The realization of the self is the end of all seeking. Papaji. How happy is man in this his power that hath been granted unto him, that he needs not do anything but what God shall approve, and that he may embrace contentedly whatsoever God doth send unto him. Only you have the power to determine whether your future mimics your past. Focus on what you can control and let go of what you cannot. If you don't have consistent goal in life, you can't live it in a consistent way. Marcus Aurelius You cannot convince people to love you. A calm sea will not make you a skilled sailor. When you let go of the need to control, you will find freedom. Rumi When at any time thou art offended with anyone's impudency, put presently this question to thyself. What? Is it then possible that there should not be any impudent men in the world? Certainly it is not possible. Desire not then that which is impossible. For this one, thou must think, whosoever he be is one of those impudent ones, that the world cannot be without. So of the subtile and crafty, so of the perfidious, so of every one that offendeth, must thou ever be ready to reason with thyself? For whilst in general thou dost thus reason with thyself, that the kind of them must needs be in the world, thou wilt be the better able to use meekness towards every particular. This also thou shalt find of very good use upon every such occasion, presently to consider with thyself what proper virtue nature hath furnished man with against such a vice, or to encounter with a disposition vicious in this kind. As for example against the unthankful, it hath given goodness and meekness as an antidote, and so against another vicious in another kind some other peculiar faculty. And generally, is it not in thy power to instruct him better, that is in an error? For whosoever sinneth doth in that decline from his purposed end, and is certainly deceived. And again, what art thou the worse for his sin? For thou shalt not find that any one of these, against whom thou art incensed, hath in very deed done anything whereby thy mind, the only true subject of thy hurt and evil, can be made worse than it was. And what a matter of either grief or wonder is this, if he that is unlearned do the deeds of one that is unlearned. Should not thou rather blame thyself, who, when upon very good grounds of reason, thou mightst have thought it very probable that such a thing would by such a one be committed, didst not only not foresee it, but moreover dost wonder at it that such a thing should be. But then especially when thou dost find fault with either an unthankful or a false man, must thou reflect upon thyself. For without all question, thou thyself art much in fault, if either of one that were of such a disposition thou didst expect that he should be true unto thee, or when unto any thou didst a good turn, thou didst not there bound thy thoughts as one that had obtained his end, nor didst not think that from the action itself thou hadst received a full reward of the good that thou hadst done. For what wouldst thou have more? Unto him that is a man, thou hast done a good turn, doth not that suffice thee? What thy nature required that hast thou done? Must thou be rewarded for it? As if either the eye for that it seeth, or the feet that they go should require satisfaction. For as these, being by nature appointed for such an use, can challenge no more than that they may work according to their natural constitution. So man being born to do good unto others, whensoever he doth a real good unto any, by helping them out of error. Or though but in middle things as in matter of wealth, life, preferment and the like, doth help to further their desires, he doth that for which he was made. 
and therefore can require no more. Life is just a race against time, so have a good time. Be bold and venture to be wise. Nothing is more active than thought, for it travels over the universe, and nothing is stronger than necessity for all must submit to it. Thales Be forgiving, be understanding, but do not be a fool. Both the optimist and the pessimist contribute to society. The optimist invents the airplane, the pessimist the parachute. In the stillness of the mind, you will find your true self. Papaji If then thou shalt separate from thyself, that is from thy mind, whatsoever other men either do or say, or whatsoever thou thyself hast heretofore either done or said, and all troublesome thoughts concerning the future, and whatsoever, as either belonging to thy body or life, is without the jurisdiction of thine own will, and whatsoever in the ordinary course of human chances and accidents doth happen unto thee, so that thy mind, keeping herself loose and free from all outward coincidental entanglements, always in a readiness to depart, shall live by herself and to herself, doing that which is just, accepting whatsoever doth happen, and speaking the truth always. If, I say, thou shalt separate from thy mind whatsoever by sympathy might adhere unto it, and all time, both past and future, and shalt make thyself in all points and respects, like unto Empedocles his allegorical sphere, all round and circular, and shalt think of no longer life than that which is now present. Then shalt thou be truly able to pass the remainder of thy days without troubles and distractions, nobly and generously disposed, and in good favor and correspondency with that spirit which is within thee. Never depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. Do not go broke trying to impress broke people. The secret of happiness, you see, is not found in seeking more, but in developing the capacity to enjoy less. Socrates. Start saving your money. No one has the answer. You're going to spend a lot of time figuring things out. Instead of thinking outside the box, get rid of the box. Deepak Chopra Whatsoever doth happen in the world is in the course of nature as usual and ordinary as a rose in the spring and fruit in summer. Of the same nature is sickness and death, slander and lying in wait, and whatsoever else ordinarily doth unto fools use to be occasion either of joy or sorrow, that, whatsoever it is, that comes after, doth always very naturally, and as it were familiarly, follow upon that which was before. For thou must consider the things of the world not as a loose independent number, consisting merely of necessary events, but as a discreet connection of things orderly and harmoniously disposed, there is then to be seen in the things of the world not a bare succession, but an admirable correspondence and affinity. If you are impatient, life will always be harder. Patience can do wonders. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. For we are made for cooperation. To act against one another then is contrary to nature. Marcus Aurelius You 
can do today. If you tell me that you desire a fig, I answer that there must be time. Let it first blossom, then bear fruit, then ripen. When you seek the truth, you are free, Rumi. Book 3, Chapter 22 About Cynicism when one of his pupils inquired of Epictetus and he was a person who appeared to be inclined to cynicism, what kind of person a cynic ought to be and what was the notion of the thing, we will inquire, said Epictetus, at leisure. But I have so much to say to you that he who without God attempts so great a matter is hateful to God and has no other purpose than to act indecently in public. For in any well-managed house no man comes forward and says to himself, I ought to be manager of the house. If he does so, the master turns round and, seeing him insolently giving orders, drags him forth and flogs him. So it is also in this great city, for here also there is a master of the house who orders everything. You are the sun. You can, by going round, make the year and seasons and make the fruits grow and nourish them and stir the winds and make them remit and warm the bodies of men properly. Go, travel round, and so administer things from the greatest to the least. You are a calf. When a lion shall appear, do your proper business. If you do not, you will suffer. You are a bull. Advance and fight, for this is your business and becomes you, and you can do it. You can lead the army against Ilium, be Agamemnon. You can fight in single combat against Hector. Be Achilles. But if Thersites came forward and claimed the command, he would either not have obtained it, or if he did obtain it, he would have disgraced himself before many witnesses. Do you also think about the matter carefully? It is not what it seems to you. I wear a cloak now, and I shall wear it then. I sleep hard now, and I shall sleep hard then. I will take in addition a little bag now and a staff, and I will go about and begin to beg and to abuse those whom I meet. And if I see any man plucking the hair out of his body, I will rebuke him. Or if he has dressed his hair, or if he walks about in purple. If you imagine the thing to be such as this, keep far away from it. Do not approach it. It is not at all for you. But if you imagine it to be what it is, and do not think yourself to be unfit for it, consider what a great thing you undertake. In the first place in the things which relate to yourself, you must not be in any respect like what you do now. You must not blame God or man. You must take away desire altogether. You must transfer avoidance only to the things which are within the power of the will. You must not feel anger, nor resentment, nor envy, nor pity. A girl must not appear handsome to you, nor must you love a little reputation, nor be pleased with a boy or a cake. For you ought to know that the rest of men throw walls around them and houses and darkness when they do any such things, and they have many means of concealment. A man shuts the door, he sets somebody before the chamber. If a person comes, say that he is out, he is not at leisure. But the cynic, instead of all these things, must use modesty as his protection. If he does not, he will he indecent in his nakedness and under the open sky. This is his house, his door. This is the slave before his bedchamber. This is his darkness. For he ought not to wish to hide anything that he does. And if he does, he is gone. He has lost the character of a cynic, of a man who lives under the open sky, of a free man. He has begun to fear some external thing. He has begun to have need of concealment, nor can he get concealment when he chooses. For where shall he hide himself and how? And if by chance this public instructor shall be detected, this pedagogue, 
what kind of things will he be compelled to suffer? When then a man fears these things, is it possible for him to be bold with his whole soul to superintend men? It cannot be. It is impossible. In the first place, then, you must make your ruling faculty pure, and this mode of life also. Now, to me the matter to work on is my understanding, as wood is to the carpenter, as hides to the shoemaker. And my business is the right use of appearances. But the body is nothing to me. The parts of it are nothing to me. Death? Let it come when it chooses, either death of the whole or of a part. Fly, you say. And whither? Can any man eject me out of the world? He cannot. But wherever I ever I go, there is the sun, there is the moon, there are the stars, dreams, omens, and the conversation with gods. Then, if he is thus prepared, the true cynic cannot be satisfied with this, but he must know that he has sent a messenger from Zeus to men about good and bad things, to show them that they have wandered and are seeking the substance of good and evil where it is not but where it is they never think, and that he is a spy. As Diogenes was carried off to Philip after the battle of Cherenea as a spy. For in fact, a cynic is a spy of the things which are good for men and which are evil. And it is his duty to examine carefully and to come and report truly, and not to be struck with terror so as to point out as enemies those who are not enemies nor in any other way to be perturbed by appearances, nor confounded. It is his duty then to be able, with a loud voice, if the occasion should arise, and appearing on the tragic stage to say like Socrates, Men, whither are you hurrying? What are you doing, wretches? Like blind people you are wandering up and down. You are going by another road, and have left the true road. You seek for prosperity and happiness where they are not. And if another shows you where they are, you do not believe him. Why do you seek it without? In the body? It is not there. If you doubt, look at Myro. Look at Ophelius. In possessions? It is not there. But if you do not believe me, look at Croesus. Look at those who are now rich. With what lamentations their life is filled. In power, it is not there. If it is, those must be happy who have been twice and thrice consuls. But they are not. Whom shall we believe in these matters? You who from without see their affairs, and are dazzled by an appearance, or the men themselves? What do they say? Hear them when they groan, when they grieve when on account of these very consulships and glory and splendor they think that they are more wretched and in greater danger? Is it in royal power? It is not. If it were, Nero would have been happy in Sardanapalus, but neither was Agamemnon happy, though he was a better man than Sardanapalus and Nero. But while others are snoring, what is he doing? Much from his head he tore his rooted hair, and what does he say himself? I am perplexed, he says, and disturbed I am, and my heart out of my bosom is leaping. Wretch, which of your affairs goes badly? Your possessions? No. Your body? No. But you are rich in gold and copper. What then is the matter with you? That part of you, whatever it is, has been neglected by you and is corrupted. The part with which we desire with which we avoid, with which we move toward and move from things. How neglected? He knows not the nature of good for which he is made by nature and the nature of evil, and what is his own and what belongs to another. And when anything that belongs to others goes badly, he says, Woe to me, for the Hellenes are in dancer. Wretched is his ruling faculty, and alone neglected and uncared for. The Hellenes are going to die destroyed by the Trojans. And if the Trojans do not kill them, will they not die? Yes, but not all at once. What difference then does it make? For if death is an evil, whether men die altogether, 
or if they die singly, it is equally an evil. Is anything else then going to happen than the separation of the soul and the body? Nothing. And if the Hellenes perish, is the door closed? And is it not in your power to die? It is. Why then do you lament, O oh, you who are a king and have the scepter of Zeus? An unhappy king does not exist more than an unhappy god. What then art thou? In truth, a shepherd. For you weep as shepherds do when a wolf has carried off one of their sheep. And these who are governed by you are sheep. And why did you come hither? Was your desire in any danger? Was your aversion? Was your movement? Was your avoidance of things? He replies, No, but the wife of my brother was carried off. Was it not then a great gain to be deprived of an adulterous wife? Shall we be despised then by the Trojans? What kind of people are the Trojans, wise or foolish? If they are wise, why do you fight with them? If they are fools, why do you care about them? In what then is the good since it is not in these things? Tell us, you who are Lord, messenger and spy, where you do not think that it is, nor choose to seek it. For if you chose to seek it, you would have found it to he in yourselves. Nor would you be wandering out of the way, nor seeking what belongs to others as if it were your own. Turn your thoughts into yourselves. Observe the preconceptions which you have. What kind of a thing do you imagine the good to be? That which flows easily, that which is happy, that which is not impeded. Come, and do you not naturally imagine it to be great? Do you not imagine it to be valuable? Do you not imagine it to be free from harm? In what material then ought you to seek for that which flows easily? for that which is not impeded, in that which serves or in that which is free, in that which is free. Do you possess the body then free or is it in servile condition? We do not know. Do you not know that it is the slave of fever, of gout, ophthalmia, dysentery, of a tyrant, of fire, of iron, of everything which is stronger? Yes, it is a slave. How then is it possible that anything which belongs to the body can be free from hindrance? And how is a thing great or valuable which is naturally dead, or earth, or mud? Well then, do you possess nothing which is free? Perhaps nothing. No one is thinking about you. Close some doors, not because of pride, incapacity or arrogance, but simply because they no longer lead somewhere. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. Men are of little worth. Their brief lives last a single day. They cannot hold elusive pleasure fast. He melts away. All laurels wither. All illusions fade. Hopes have been phantoms, shade on air-built shade since time began. Sophocles The point of the argument is not to defeat each other, but to understand each other. Happiness is something that multiplies when it is divided. The quality of your life is the quality of your relationships. Tony Robbins As long as the foot doth that which belongeth unto it to do, and the hand that which belongs unto it, their labor, whatsoever it be, is not unnatural. So a man, as long as he doth that which is proper unto a man, his labor cannot be against nature, and if it be not against nature, then neither is it hurtful unto him. But if it were so that happiness did consist in pleasure, how came notorious robbers, impure, abominable livers, parasites, and tyrants in so large a measure to have their part of pleasures?
We are our choices. It never ends. As long as life goes on, a man needs to learn to feel the present moment and not hope for an unknown future. The challenge is to tussle, play, and make love with the present moment. To conquer oneself is a greater victory than to conquer thousands in a battle. Buddha What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. If you want to do something, don't delay, but don't sacrifice what you want for what you want right now. Meditation is not a way of making your mind quiet. It is a way of entering into the quiet that is already there. Deepak Chopra What? Are either Panthea or Pergamus abiding to this day by their master's tombs? Or either Chabrias or Diotimus by that of Adrianus? Oh, foolery! For what if they did? Would their masters be sensible of it? Or if sensible, would they be glad of it? Or if glad were these immortal, was not it appointed unto them also, both men and women, to become old in time, and then to die? And these once dead, what would become of these former? And when all is done, what is all this for, but for a mere bag of blood and corruption? Do not allow anyone to treat you badly just because you love them. The time is always right to do what is right. In anger, we should refrain both from speech and action. Pythagoras The days that break you are the days that make you Who brings you the most peace should get the most time. Man suffers only because he takes seriously what the gods made for fun. Alan Watts It is impossible to live a pleasant life without living wisely and honorably and justly and it is impossible to live wisely and honorably and justly without living pleasantly. Whenever any one of these is lacking, when, for instance, the man is not able to live wisely, though he lives honorably and justly, it is impossible for him to live a pleasant life. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. Nothing ever goes away until it teaches us what we need to know. De omnibus dubitandum, everything must be doubted. Aristotle. Stop doing what is easy or popular. Start doing what is right. It all begins and ends in your mind. What you give power to has power over you. Work on mastering your mind. The only way to achieve massive success is to first fail massively. Alex Hormozzi Why should I grieve myself? who never did willingly grieve any other. One thing rejoices one and another thing another. As for me, this is my joy, if my understanding be right and sound, as neither averse from any man, nor refusing any of those things which as a man I am subject unto. If I can look upon all things in the world meekly and kindly, 
accept all things and carry myself towards everything according to the true worth of the thing itself. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. If you start by promising what you don't even have yet, you'll lose your desire to work towards getting it. The greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. Ronald Reagan Learn to heal without venting to everyone to avoid disappointment. They are not dead who live in the hearts they leave behind. My actions are my only true belongings. I cannot escape the consequences of my actions. My actions are the ground on which I stand. Thich Nhat Hanh. In my father, I observed his meekness, his constancy without wavering in those things, which after a due examination and deliberation he had determined. How free from all vanity he carried himself in matter of honor and dignity, as they are esteemed, his laboriousness and assiduity, his readiness to hear any man that had ought to say tending to any common good, how generally and impartially he would give every man his due, his skill and knowledge, when rigor or extremity, or when remissness or moderation was in season, how he did abstain from all unchaste love of youths, his moderate condescending to other men's occasions as an ordinary man, neither absolutely requiring of his friends, that they should wait upon him at his ordinary meals, nor that they should of necessity accompany him in his journeys and that whensoever any business upon some necessary occasions was to be put off and omitted before it could be ended, he was ever found when he went about it again, the same man that he was before, his accurate examination of things in consultations and patient hearing of others. He would not hastily give over the search of the matter as one easy to be satisfied with sudden notions and apprehensions, his care to preserve his friends, how neither at any time he would carry himself towards them with disdainful neglect and grow weary of them, nor yet at any time be madly fond of them, his contented mind in all things, his cheerful countenance, his care to foresee things afar off and to take order for the least without any noise or clamor. Moreover, how all acclamations and flattery were repressed by him, how carefully he observed all things necessary to the government and kept an account of the common expenses, and how patiently he did abide that he was reprehended by some for this his strict and rigid kind of dealing, how he was neither a superstitious worshipper of the gods nor an ambitious pleaser of men or studious of popular applause, but sober in all things and everywhere observant of that which was fitting, no effector of novelties, in those things which conduced to his ease and convenience, plenty whereof his fortune did afford him, without pride and bragging, yet with all freedom and liberty, so that as he did freely enjoy them without any anxiety or affectation when they were present, so when absent he found no want of them. Moreover, that he was never commended by any man as either a learned acute man, or an obsequious officious man, or a fine orator, but as a ripe, mature man, a perfect sound man, one that could not endure to be flattered, able to govern both himself and others, moreover how much he did honor all true philosophers without upbraiding those that were not so, his sociableness, his gracious and delightful conversation, but never unto satiety, his care of his body within bounds and measure, not as one that desired to live long or overstudious of neatness and elegancy, and yet not as one that did not regard it, so that through his own care and providence he seldom needed any inward physics or outward applications, but especially how ingeniously he would yield to any that had obtained any peculiar faculty, 
as either eloquence or the knowledge of the laws or of ancient customs or the like, and how he concurred with them in his best care and endeavor that every one of them might, in his kind, for that wherein he excelled, be regarded and esteemed. And although he did all things carefully after the ancient customs of his forefathers, yet even of this was he not desirous that men should take notice that he did imitate ancient customs. Again, how he was not easily moved and tossed up and down, but loved to be constant, both in the same places and businesses, and how after his great fits of headache he would return fresh and vigorous to his wonted affairs. Again, that secrets he neither had many nor often, and such only as concerned public matters, his discretion and moderation, in exhibiting of the public sights and shows for the pleasure and pastime of the people, in public buildings, congieries, and the like. In all these things, having a respect unto men only as men, and to the equity of the things themselves, and not unto the glory that might follow, never wont to use the baths at unseasonable hours. No builder, never curious or solicitous, either about his meat, or about the workmanship, or color of his clothes, or about anything that belonged to external beauty. In all his conversation, far from all inhumanity, all boldness and incivility, all greediness and impetuosity, never doing anything with such earnestness and intention that a man could say of him that he did sweat about it, but contrarywise, all things distinctly, as at leisure, without trouble, orderly, soundly, and agreeably. A man might have applied that to him, which is recorded of Socrates, that he knew how to want and to enjoy those things, in the want whereof most men show themselves weak, and in the fruition intemperate, but to hold out firm and constant, and to keep within the compass of true moderation and sobriety in either estate, is proper to a man who hath a perfect and invincible soul, such as he showed himself in the sickness of Maximus. Sometimes we see a lot but do not notice the main thing. Anything you dream is fiction, and anything you accomplish is science. The whole history of mankind is nothing but science fiction. What we do now echoes in eternity, Marcus Aurelius. To become what one is, one must not have the faintest notion of what one is. Pain only leaves you when it teaches you something. Success means doing the best we can with what we have. Success is the doing, not the getting. In the trying, not the triumph. Zig Ziglar To those who fall off from their purpose. Consider as to the things which you propose to yourself at first, which you have secured and which you have not, and how you are pleased when you recall to memory the one and are pained about the other, and if it is possible recover the things wherein you failed. For we must not shrink when we are engaged in the greatest combat, but we must even take blows. For the combat before us is not in wrestling in the pancration, in which both the successful and the unsuccessful may have the greatest merit, or may have little, and in truth may be very fortunate or very unfortunate, but the combat is for good fortune and happiness themselves. Well then, even if we have renounced the contest in this matter, no man hinders us from renewing the combat again and we are not compelled to wait for another four years that the games at Olympia may come again. But as soon as you have recovered and restored yourself, 
and employ the same zeal, you may renew the combat again. And if again you renounce it, you may again renew it. And if you once gain the victory, you are like him who has never renounced the combat. Only do not, through a habit of doing the same thing, begin to do it with pleasure, and then like a bad athlete go about after being conquered in all the circuit of the games like quails who have run away. The sight of a beautiful young girl overpowers me. Well, have I not been overpowered before? An inclination arises in me to find fault with a person, for have I not found fault with him before? You speak to us as if you had come off free from harm, just as if a man should say to his physician who forbids him to bathe, Have I not bathed before? If then the physician can say to him, Well, and what then happened to you after the bath? Had you not a fever? Had you not a headache? And when you found fault with a person lately, did you not do the act of a malignant person, of a trifling babbler, did you not cherish this habit in you by adding to it the corresponding acts? And when you were overpowered by the young girl, did you come off unharmed? Why then do you talk of what you did before? You ought, I think, remembering what you did, as slaves remember the blows which they have received, to abstain from the same faults. But the one case is not like the other. For in the case of slaves, the pain causes the remembrance. But in the case of your faults, what is the pain? What is the punishment? For when have you been accustomed to fly from evil acts? Sufferings then.